Well, it's a splendid early November afternoon here near the Great Smoky Mountains. 53 degrees, winds just a slight breeze out of the north at 5. And the forecast for clear and cool. Uh, Tennessee at home, 11-1-1. and The only victory by Louisiana State all the way back in 1988. That tie, 1925. Zip, zip. We always talk about players in a big game, but I really think this is going to be a coach's game. Decisions by both Miles and Fulmer because of the injuries. How do they strategize on key parts of this game? They could bench coach this game into a win. This is uh, a team that has not excelled on kick returns, and they've got a couple of youngsters back there, Marcellus Johnson and Ja'Curry Williams, and this is a fine boot by Chris Jackson. Taken by Ja'Curry Williams, number six, touchback, and here is Eric Ainge. I can only imagine the adrenaline, but the pain as well. Well, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, quarterbacks love the shotgun because of his ankle. And Eric Ainge telling us yesterday the toughest part is moving away from center. Yeah, that, that quick first step is tough from under center. And they will start under center. Josh McNeil is the center, and here's Ainge with the change. The junior who is having a splendid season had a nightmare evening in this game a year ago. The draw play, Arian Foster, number 27, loses a yard. Glenn Dorsey gets the tackle. We take a look at the offensive lineup presented by Applebee's. Aaron Sears, Ligon, McNeil, Parker, and Eric Young. The offensive line, they've allowed only six sacks this year. Meacham, along with the Swain of the wideouts, Chris Brown, the tight end, along with Cotton. Second down, 11. Here's Ainge rolling out, hit and dropped as he lets it go. And it's incomplete. Tyson Jackson, number 93, got the contact. If I was the defensive coordinator for LSU, I would say every time, legally, put a hit on Eric Ainge. That should be the game plan for LSU. That kind of builds up. When you're hurting in one area, you start to feel it in other areas because you can't make yourself, you can't protect yourself as well when you got a bad ankle. Third and 10. Ainge will move back into the shotgun. He's got Cotton back there as a protector. Good protection. And the pass is incomplete. Bobbled by Robert Meacham. That's a rare drop for Meacham this year. Can't throw it any better than that for Eric Ainge. Five-man rush. Only three-man line for LSU. Brought by now Meacham matched up one-on-one -on -one against Jackson. Good route. Squares him up. Ball is perfect. Perfect ball. And you got to help an injured quarterback. He's not going to be there for every throw. But this time Ainge gets his foot into the throw, gets his body into the throw, and throws a strike. Nice protection up front. Three and out for Tennessee. Britton Colquitt, who's got an outstanding average, near 47 yards per punt. But the punt return coverage has been deficient. Now Buster Davis will let this one bounce. And it takes a Tennessee hop. And comes to a stop at the 27-yard line. Got about 15 on the roll. That's a 53-yard punt. Nothing on the return. And Jamarcus Russell has played so much better than Craig Davis is also there. And Justin Vincent will get the start at tailback. Jamarcus Russell back. Right side, almost intercepted, but the pass is caught by Craig Buster Davis. <laughs> Defensively, a seldom used freshman is in the backfield. They like what he's done the last couple of weeks. Number five. That's why they like what he's done. He is a big-time recruit. Hargrove Military Academy a year ago, 2004, was a star coming out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Hits the hole full speed. LSU has been searching for a go-to back all year, whether it been injuries, overweight, or lack of production. They've been looking for somebody. Tailback by committee works a little bit, but a guy you can ride works better. He's been particularly effective in the last two games. Has not played on the road, either at Florida or at Auburn. Here's Russell, flips it out. Keelan Williams, one-on-one. -on -one. And he's got...
got another first down for LSU at the 31-yard line. Tackle is made by Antoine Stewart. That's a gain of 12. This LSU offense is a fast starting offense. The last four games, they have scored on their first drive of the game, including Florida, by the way. Dwayne Bow, wide receiver, is split out on this play. He's going to come into your picture and get a big block. Watch him right here. Okay, come in, wham, run around and get a block. I'll tell you what, your teammates love that type of wide receiver play. And just to add to what Gary said, they've scored on eight of nine, and uh, or rather seven of eight, I beg your pardon, have been touchdowns. One was a field goal. Here's Keelan Williams again. Les Miles was telling us yesterday, Gary, that they have Monday scrimmages for the guys who don't get right. to play on the weekend, and he has excelled the last three or four weeks. And, and you know what it is with a r young running back? They're, they're used in high school to making, you know, 10-yard runs, 30-yard runs, 40-yard runs. Then they come into SEC football, they get three-yard runs, they get frustrated. Keelan Williams has learned to run and make three yards. That's why he's effective. On the depth chart, he's the number five back. And he wears number five, and he is stopped short of the first down by Ger Gerard Mayo, the linebacker, number seven. On the bench, Eric Ainge. He's chatting upstairs with David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator, who has had a dramatic impact on his game this year. He sure has, and uh, it has been night day. David on the left right there. Trying to figure out what the next series. It is very difficult to call plays for an injured player. I, I'll tell you that. You don't know what to grab onto. You just don't call a clean game. And Herman Johnson is down the uh, left guard. Uh, he, he had pulled on two or three running plays in a row. Kind of a power O type play. He's the off guard. He pulls around. That's the O part of it. And uh, that time he came back to the huddle and limp, 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 and all of a sudden fell down. Johnson from Denton, Texas, a sophomore. You see the size, 6'7", 351. And uh, he was the largest, still I think, in the record books, <laughs> the largest baby ever born. Wow. In the, now that is a large child. That's a Gare. large child. Huh? 15 he's, pounds, 14 ounces. He's a large man still. He's 350 pounds. Largest baby ever put into the record books in Louisiana. And then the family moved to Texas. And, and this is a key part of this football game. Uh, when we talked to Coach John Chavis, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, he said the one part of this football game, my defense must win. We must dominate the line of scrimmage. Now, for LSU to lose a guy up there, that's going to play into what Chavis has been selling his guys all up front. We have to dominate the line of scrimmage. Well, as they tend to Herman Johnson, time has been called. Herman Johnson walked off without assistance. And in the backfield now, Jacob Hester, who has started at running back most of the last few games. Third down and three. Brett's threatened by Tennessee. Flag is thrown by the line judge. Looks like Diakowski and Dixon may have moved over on the right side. Tennessee has a late shift when they shift into their bare front, and that's what got right LSU to move. Ball start. 77 on the offense. 25 yards. Down line third. It's a late shift by Tennessee. They go from a four-man front, and then the linebacker comes up here into a five-man front. That shift drew the movement from LSU. On Peter Diakowski, Herman Johnson is back on the floor of the field, rather number 79 and it's a now third and eight Tennessee brings five Jamarcus Russell in trouble got him look at him oh that could be a fumble it is ruled a fumble and recovered by LSU back at the 35 and Jamarcus Russell is down Brian Johnson recovered it Russell Matt Flynn is the backup who had that great bowl game in January. Xavier Mitchell, number 93, led the pressure and got to Jamarcus Russell. Russell playing here with 20 friends and family in the stands. Yeah, I tell you, it, Tennessee jumped into the same look again, but did not come with the five-man, but they brought the, the middle linebacker. <laughs> You know, I don't blame Xavier Mitchell. The guy's 265 pounds. You got to pull on that leg. 
Now watch it, Mitchell, defensive end, who actually looks smaller than the quarterback in this picture, cannot bring it down, and as he flips the ball up, you can see it came out sideways, and that was called a fumble. Mitchell trying to make a wishbone out of yeah. Marcus Russell, and Russell, this is a good sign. Now, now, you don't see that much, do you? The defensive end being smaller than the quarterback. He's listed at 6'6", 260, that is Jamarcus Russell, not the defensive end. No, exactly. And Matt Flynn, the junior from Tyler, Texas, is on to hold for the field goal. A 52-yarder, Colt David, whose longest of the year is 45. Flynn will hold. David, the sophomore from Grapevine near the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. High snap, hold is down, good. I don't think it will not. Short. A self-inflicted wound by LSU. The third down and short penalty really kept them from having an easy chip shot field goal or a chance to score. That's one of those little moments in the game you tend to forget when it's all over, but uh, you probably ought to think about it right now. Jamarcus Russell injured on the bench. Looks like he's going to be able to come back. Well, there's ja Jamarcus Russell on the bench. Gary, we're talking during the uh, timeout. Les Miles was kind of in Never Never Land. There. Sure, it, but it's a coaching decision. You know, you got a great defense. Do you pooch the punt down there, try to back up Tennessee, or do you go for points? He went for points, didn't make it, gives Tennessee great field position. At the 35, first down and 10, Eric Ainge, play fake, drills it out to the left side, and it's incomplete. That's Meacham again. I don't know if that was a drop or not, but it looked close to it. Chivas Jackson was defending, second down and 10. Well, here's the Applebee's defensive lineup. Jackson, Dorsey, Favorite, and Pittman. This is the number one defense in college football. Highsmith, Sanders, Beckwith, and in the secondary, the All-American LaRon Landry making his 44th consecutive start today. Arian Foster on the field, split top of the screen. Ainge back, three-man rush. Incomplete again in the vicinity of Meacham. Jonathan Zenon defending Robert Meacham. Well, take a look at these stats, Gary. And they're great stats. And they may be tainted a bit by the type of uh, people they're playing at home, but I don't care. You watch the tape, they're just as good on tape as their stats say. Sometimes that's not the case. But this time, this LSU defense with Bo Pelini as their coordinator, just as good as their stats say they are. Tennessee. Ainge, excuse me, Vern. Ainge is having trouble with his footwork. The balls have been a little bit off when he hits a little bit of pressure. Oh, for his first four. Out of the spread. Stunts defensively. Dorsey coming. Ainge hit as he lets it go. He's off the five. Well, that's another drop, though. Yep. This Brett, is Brett Smith. Sure is. Right down the middle. He's been so dependable. And, you know, when you got an injured quarterback, you got to help him a little bit. There's the footwork back there. Looks like he's moving well on that one. Gets hit again inside as he releases the ball. And another strike. And at least the second drop pass of the game. Perhaps three drop passes. That's going to bring Cole Quit on for the second punt. Craig Davis is deep. He replaced... Jesus Jackson after Jackson fumbled a punt in the loss at Florida. This is a boomer. And Davis at the 13-yard line. Nice special teams work. A flag well after the tackle was made. The initial hit from Demetrius Morley, number 20. I think LaRon Landry had a shove in the back on the return also. That would even hurt the field position more. Ken Wagers is our referee. Ah. Ah. Pointed the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's only two ways. You know, if you go the wrong way, you go the other way. <laughs> For most of us. That's right. <laughs> How that field is turned upside down now. During the return, yeah. illegal block in the back. Number 30 on the receiving team. Penalty will be half the distance of the goal. First down. 
And there is Jamarcus Russell injured on a sack and a fumble. He will remain on the bench. Matt Flynn, the junior from Tyler, Texas, will be in at quarterback. We welcome you back to Knoxville on this perfect fall day. And Jamar Jamarcus Russell on the LSU bench, and Tracy Wolfson is in the neighborhood. Trace? Yeah, that's right. Jamarcus Russell got hit in the back of his head. They were checking his vision earlier. He's right now, as you can see, throwing on the sideline. They said they don't know how long he'll be out. Maybe a series, maybe longer. All right, thank you, Trace. Matt Flynn. Boy, if you've got to go to a backup, he's a good one. He sure is. Okay, played against Miami with that big, huge game he had. Has not played all that much this year. He'll hand it off on first down. This is Ali Broussard, and a flag is thrown. This uh, usually is in the vicinity of a holding call. And so it is. Now, Jimbo Fisher has the same problems that David Cutcliffe had just a few minutes ago. The offensive coordinator for LSU now has a backup quarterback in the game. You assume Jamarcus Russell got most of the practice time. Do you expand the, the running game? Do you run the same offense? The holding of this team. Number 74 on the offense. Penalty half the distance to the goal. That remains first. When we were visiting with Les Miles yesterday on the field, Vern, he said the strength of our team is when we throw the football, our wide receivers are the strength of the football team. They, like Tennessee, problems with the running game. Matt Flynn has only thrown it 20 times this year. He's 12 for 20, limited appearances. But he has excelled in previous games. Ball play. Allie Broussard out to the seven-yard line. Justin Vincent is in the backfield now. Flynn from the end zone being chased by Mitchell. And he will be forced out of bounds, and LSU will be forced to punt. It was Turk McBride, number 90, who went into the uh, bushes after making the tackle. Ryan Carl, number 39, the outside linebacker, took away the fullback on the play right here. Fullback Kester's going to try to go wide, and Carl says, no, no, I'm going to take him away, forcing Flynn to come out of the pocket and run the ball. Nobody open on the play. Good job by the outside linebacker, Ryan Carl. Uh, we've referred to Matt Flynn's uh, outstanding game in the Peach Bowl against Miami. He was the most valuable player in that game, 196 yards. After Russell was injured, and it's third down and seven. Look at this movement by Tennessee up front. They're not allowing LSU to see anyone standing still. From the corner, Morley. Morley got him. That's the first sack of the season for the sophomore from Miami, Florida. How about that changeup for Tennessee and John Chavis? Boy, you don't see this look very often. Everybody up front. Watch this movement up front. Nobody's standing still. Who do you block? Who's coming? Who's got who? Here comes the snap of the ball, and off the corner right there is going to be the sack because a breakdown up front. What a wonderful scheme from John Chavis. Chris Jackson is on deep. Punt return defense has been a problem for LSU as it has been for Tennessee. Jonathan Hefney is back, and we may have a delay of game call. Sure is. This one, uh, the flag thrown before the snap. Uh, Hefney has had uh, an outstanding Prior season. To the ball being snap, delay of game on the offense. Penalty will be half the distance to the goal. You know, it's interesting. You look at LSU in 05. Last year, they were fifth in the country in net punting. Same punter this year, 102nd. Amazing. <laughs> and uh, with Hefney back there, the punt returns have improved dramatically in the last two games. He has a 65-yarder without scoring a touchdown. Starting defensive back, wearing number 33. So Jackson checks to make sure he does not have his foot on the end line. And he'll kick out of the checkerboard. What a punt. Sure was. Hefney at the 42 in jail. Nothing wrong with the coverage on either team's punt return defensive team. 55-yard punt. 
Smokey the ninth. He bet a player from Bama a couple of weeks ago. Not too happy right now, I would think. Sometimes talking strategy, we get lost of the guts in football. Inside, Glenn Dorsey, guys like that, nose tackle, who you must block, has already been a force in the game. Ainge will try and keep it on the road. We'll keep it on the ground. Arian Foster will try and turn it into something, and that's not much as Jesse Daniels, number 31. Now let's check, uh, see what they did with Glenn Dorsey. Well, on this Josh play. McNeil, freshman oh, center, is going to be matched up on Dorsey one-on-one -on -one right here. Gets no help this time. Actually does get a bit. Anthony Parker helps and turns, but you see how Dorsey doesn't really get knocked down. There's no cutback lanes. That's why LSU, look at that, three Four guys out there, nowhere to cut back on the running game. Second down and eight, the game of two. Ainge yet to complete a pass. Three have been dropped. This one is caught. And it's Jason Swain, number one, but only three yards. So uh, Eric Ainge and the Tennessee offense looking at their third, third down of this first quarter. They've been three and out. Twice previously. LSU is doing using a package that we saw them use against Florida. They're going with a three-man look on defensive line on third down plays. That's Bo Pelini sending in the personnel. And a late ad is uh, Alexander, number 91. We got too many guys on the Yeah, field they do. Right now. Yes, they do. They he came on. Nobody came right. off. They had a three-man package with a four-man defensive line. That doesn't LSU. work. LSU. First Remember that big call Ohio. against Florida when they had too many men on the field on that last drive of the first half cost them dearly. So they uh, burn a timeout here. And it comes late first quarter. Neyland Stadium. Smokey. It's a pretty decent scene. Well, that's not. After, uh, no one came off. Bo Pelini, the defensive coordinator, had uh, an angry response. Yeah, and that's what it is. One coach is yelling dime. The other coach hears nickel, miscommunication. Somebody sends out a defensive lineman. They aren't on the same page. And it adds up to a timeout burned in the quarter. First quarter. There you go. I was on to the next thing. Some, I got, sometimes I got it's, with you. I sometimes it. it's a reach. <laughs> right. Four wide receivers out here. <laughs> Third and five. Ainge, pressure. Watch out from behind. Glenn Dorsey, they didn't get him that time. Nice scheme. As you can see, Ainge, he's limping more now after he gets tackled on that ankle. That's the worst he's looked all, all game. Dorsey inside. Chase Pittman, really nice look. Watch Pittman right here. He'll come in and then go back out and drop. Dorsey inside. Beautiful pass rush gets through and goes right for the ankles. Like a boxer with a cut on his eye. You punch the eye, quarterback with an ankle, you tackle the ankle. And that was David Ligon, number 66, with the lookout block. As the guy goes by, you turn to your quarterback and say, look out. This one into the end zone. Colquitt. That's a 59-yard punt. And uh, that hit on Eric Ainge might prove costly. Yeah, coming from behind, you can see it goes on the Ainge, but it looks like Jamarcus Russell got his helmet back on, too, on the sideline. Let's see if he comes on as Ainge goes off. See the guy who's uh, conferring with Eric Ainge, greatest name in all of college football, Jim Bob Cooter. He's the fourth team quarterback. Crompton up and alert. And Jonathan Crompton saying, I'm ready. And Jamarcus Russell says, my head is clear. Keelan Williams is the tailback. Russell still has it. Oh, that one. That one was dropped by Dwayne Bowe. And Eric Ainge, second and ten of Tennessee. Keelan Williams. A couple of yards. It'll be 
third down. And Gary, your uh, guide to the game. Well, a million things could happen in the game, but for LSU, I think they need to find a runner. They've got five of them they use, and they got to find one they can ride. And then they can't lose it. We saw them in Florida where they actually gave the football game. Tennessee, got to find help for the quarterback. Ainge is nicked. you got to make tough catches. They haven't done that. And be physical. If you're going to beat LSU, you have to match their physical play. The running back is Jacob Hester on third down and seven. Little inside pass. Nice play. That's Dwayne Bow. And that is a first down for LSU all the way out to the 39. A gain of 16. Nice call by Jimbo Fisher. Had that kind of gimmick look from Tennessee again where people are moving all over. Kind of in and out wide receiver screen. The perfect call against that defense. And Bo, when he gets it, he goes north and south. Jonathan Crompton is a redshirt freshman. Had to sit out all of last year with a shoulder injury. He's from uh, Waynesville, North Carolina, about an hour and a half from here. Has played limited minutes this year, but is warming up, as you can see. First down and 10. LSU has to use a second timeout, still in the first quarter. Now, you, and you wonder there, again, now, is this Jamarcus, you know, still a little woozy, not being able to change the play or what? I mean, a lot of things you get when you go against Tennessee. This is still an even game. Play safe. Eric Ainge being comforted. Philip Fulmer back chatting with him. Can you go? I don't think so. And Jamarcus Russell now, first down and 10. Trendon Holiday, a five foot five inch running. Oh, did they call another one? Yeah, uh, Tennessee's pointing to Herman Johnson, number 79, as if he's clinched. There's going to be an argument, obviously, about it. Prior to the snap, ball start. 79 on the offense. Yeah, it's 75 yards. That remains one. We spoke with Philip Fulmer as we look at this movement again about Eric Haynes. You're going to see the little flinch right there. That's all you got to do about what he's going to do when he talks to Eric Ainge. He says, I know he's going to lie to me. I know he's going to say he's okay. I'm just going to have to judge for myself changing quarterbacks. Well, he really looked fine until the sack. Well, you get hit in this game, right? Yeah. Well, that's what happens. Trendon Holiday is the deep man in the eye. He gets the toss. 5'5", five, five, 165, and great speed. He was a three-time 100-meter dash champion in high school in class 2A. 11 on that pickup. Right, when I went and watched LSU practice a few weeks ago, they were giving him a lot of these pitch practices in, in practice, but they weren't letting him do it in the game yet. He's earned the trust of Les Miles and Jimbo Fisher, their offensive coordinator. You can see he's going to take a few hits, but he's earned their trust that he can take a hit in this league, and his speed is magnificent. Second down, four. Here's the toss to Jacob Hester, goes right. Gets a block from Brett Helms, the center, number 74. And that'll be close to a first down for LSU again. Let's go back to Tim. Bird, we're talking about getting bowl eligible at Kentucky, looking for their fifth win of the year. And uh, Matthew Stafford's going to be picked off. Trevard Lindley gathers it in to seal the deal. And yes, uh, they did get to storm the field, unlike that game with LSU a few years ago. <laughs> the blue, the bluegrass miracle that everyone recalls. Kentucky one game away from being bowl eligible, Vern. Well, and the way things have gone there, Tim, in recent years, a reason for the celebration sure, sure. on the field. Good uh, for Rich Brooks. By the way, Jacob Hester, their good blocking fullback, left the field limping badly on his left ankle. Jamarcus Russell back, looks deep, launches it wide open. Wait, oh my gosh! Craig Davis dropped it. The ball was slightly underthrown, and Davis could feel the safety closing in on him as the ball was coming. It was Morley that was closing. Obviously, should catch the ball, but fake to the outside. They've been running that corner out. Now it hangs, and he can feel that safety coming, and does not bring it in. Is that, uh, he should have had that ball, obviously. I mean, right in his arms. And we've seen now, what, four drop passes in this football game. Yeah, short-armed it. Second down and 10. 
Here's Russell back. Dropped. DeMonte Bolden, who's getting more and more playing time as the season winds down. Number 98. That's his first sack of the season. You know, when you watch Tennessee and you watch LSU, they do about the same thing. They come after you on second down. This time it's Bolden. A lot of teams, if they got you first down, they stop you second and long. They kind of sit back. Not LSU and not Tennessee. They keep coming. Third and 15. Vincent is the running back. Now Tennessee is claiming that there was movement in the line again. If so, it would be the sixth first quarter penalty against the Tigers. Robert Ayers came into the neutral zone. He's claiming that Johnson influenced him. Prior to the snap, full start, 79 on the offense. That penalty is five yards, Darren Aether. That movement package by Tennessee where the linemen are up and moving and shuffling back and forth has really got a discombobulation for LSU's offensive line. They cannot get the feel of this football game. Now think about a, a, a movement call earlier in this yep. quarter, cost them position. They missed a 52-yard field goal. Now they're looking at third and 20. Blitz from the corner. Russell forced to his right. Pulls up. Hit as he lets it go. It's caught. That one is held on to by Dwayne Bow. What a pass and catch. They needed 20, and they got 25. Let me tell you what the quarterback coach says to a quarterback in this situation. All right, you got pressure on you. You come out of the pocket. All right, as you flush out of the pocket, keep your eyes downfield. But, but don't throw out balance and don't throw across your body. He did both, but he ripped it downfield about 35 yards, and Bo cuts across the middle of the field, and he goes and gets this one. He does No one short arms this one, and the most physical receiver for LSU makes a great play. Antoine Stewart was covering first down, toss. Keelan Williams cut down with a loss all the way back to the 40. Robert Ayers, number 91. The initial contact and Ryan Carl, the linebacker, 39, helped. People ask me, what's the biggest difference between the Southeastern Conference and other football I've done over the years? Right there. Defensive ends in this conference are superior to any conference I've ever done in my 15 years before I came to the Southeastern Conference. They get a little speed, don't they? They sure do. Second and 15. Final 36 seconds, first quarter. Three-man rush by Tennessee. Russell dropped. Bo holds on to the tough third down catch. Can't hang on to this one. Well, Eric Ainge might be done for the day. Well, at least he's done, it looks like, for the next series. And the great game plan by LSU. They said, OK, you know you're going to throw the ball. We're going to make sure that we hit you. Some early good throws, but a lot of pressure on Eric Gage. And by the way, the Tennessee receivers got to help their quarterback in his football game. Gage on the bench now. It's third down again, third and 15. And Hester is in the backfield with Jamarcus Russell. Again, three down, five coming. Russell hit as he lets it go. It's caught. Another significant third down play. This one early Doucette. That is really pretty, isn't it? I tell you, they come across the field, and that ball just gets ripped into those receivers. This is just a simple square, and there's Doucette right here, right across. Watch how nice and square he runs his route. Pressure comes across, cuts right down that line. You get your receivers running 90 degree angles and you can catch a lot of square ends. And Jamarcus Russ, you better get to this guy because when he flicks it, it's got some zip on it and you better be real close because the ball isn't in the air a very long time. Well, they'll measure for the first down. I remember we were chatting on the phone with Jamarcus Russell before the Florida game. He said, oh. an inch. He said, I'm kind of tough to bring down. Yeah. 
that's for sure. So fourth and inches, another decision now for Les Miles. Well, I think he's got to go for this one. He's going to wait for the quarter. He's got 10 seconds here to let the quarter run out and make that decision in the second quarter. Now, the only thing that's kind of funny here, you'd like to run a quarterback sneak. Remember two things. He fumbled a quarterback sneak against Florida, and he's already been dinged once in this football game. Let's see if they go with something different. Now, whatever they do, they will do at the south end. As we have reached the end of the first. The end of 15 at Neyland Stadium before a crowd in excess of 100,000. And we'll return to Neyland Stadium after this message. And this word from your local station. We went to the commercial break. Jonathan Crompton down. Receives a handshake from his head coach. He will be at quarterback when Tennessee gets the ball back has played in four games so far this year and at least i would think for the, at least till the end of the half eric ainge is done fourth and inches now broussard is the deep back he gets the handoff and he gets the first down as lsu is inside the 30 yard line for the second time in this first first quarter, trying to win for only the second time ever here. Impressions from the first quarter, Gary? Well, Jamarcus Russell could really flick it. Uh, I mean, if you give him time, and his receivers love to catch the ball across the middle of the field, they're tough to stop. And Tennessee is in negative yards in the first quarter. I don't think there's any doubt that Ainge is not even close to 100%. He tried to go. He can move already kind of in the pocket. But this is a very physical defense, and I don't think you can play less than 100% against this defense. Play fake Russell. Pumps goes deep in the end zone. Wide open. LSU touchdown. Craig Davis. Oh, it was a frozen rope. Yeah. See? It's an NFL arm. I mean, he's not there in every area, but that ball stays in the air like an NFL zip. You almost are forced to play man coverage against him because the ball is in the air so little time, the zones become very, very easy to shred. 16th touchdown of the season against only four interceptions for Russell and Colt David has hit 67 consecutive extra points. Matt Flynn to hold. Well, that, he ought to circle number 68. That one limped through. But it's good. The touchdown, Jamarcus Russell finds Craig Davis, and LSU goes on top on the road, 7-7. And now it's time for the playbook presented by the Hartford here. Well, here's Craig Davis, and the play behind the play happens about halfway through this play. That's the guy who catches the pass. We'll show you the breakdown of why it happened. Right about here, you look at where a guy has help. It's Demetrius Morley. He's right here, okay? There's his help to the outside. He should not get beat to the outside now because he's got help. He overplays it to the outside, allows it inside. They had the perfect defense on, but Morley didn't know where his help is. The play behind the play is a smart safety knows where your help is. And Craig Davis gets the uh, touchdown catch from Jamarcus Russell. As we mentioned, he's got uh, 20 members of his family or close friends who are in attendance today. That's an 80-yard drive. 13 plays, took 5 minutes and 46 seconds. And that one goes through Marcellus Johnson's hands, and he goes back and retrieves it and takes a knee. Nice heads-up play. The momentum of the football took it into the end zone. He did not have to bring it out. And so Jonathan Crompton, redshirt freshman, shoulder injury out all of last year. He's attempted only four passes. Two of those came in mop-up duty in that convincing win on September 2nd against California. The other two at Memphis. He played late in last week's game when Eric Ainge was injured, but he has a big arm. He sure does. We visited with him yesterday with Eric Ainge right there. They both sat there and answered questions, and Crompton really never backed up. He was very confident with everything we threw at him as a question. Three and out three times, and... Little officials conversation here. Penn Wagers comes in. Jonathan Crompton, 6'4", 225. He was recruited by LSU. Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator. And he also 
thought about attending Michigan. Les Miles' alma mater. And Tracy Wilson's alma mater. <laughs> you like to give a young quarterback an easy throw to get him off in a football game. Or a handoff. And this one is Montario Hardesty. Comes left and runs into Tyson Jackson. Now, you watched practice day yeah. before yesterday. Well, he has a very tight arm delivery. He doesn't kind of loop it around. He's very quick delivering the ball, very strong arm. I wouldn't say he's got a Jamarcus Russell arm, but he has a good enough arm and very, very confident. Was even yelling at receivers to get back on their routes, come back and get the ball. He was trying to take charge. Second and seven. Guards to his right, chased by Dorsey. Tucks it. Oh! He sold out and dived for the first down. Did he get it? I think he was just short. Now David Cutcliffe was trying to give Compton that easy throw to Hardesty number two. Right there, that's who he was supposed to go to. But watch LSU tackle him. No way he's getting out. There's two guys on him. So now Compton has nothing to do but get downfield and run because everyone else for Tennessee is blocking because it was kind of like a slip screen to the running back. Ollie Highsmith knocked him out of bounds. Montario Hardesty is the deep back on third and one. David Holbert is the fullback. Holbert leads the way they come left. Hardesty, I think he got it. See what kind of a spot they give him. Just across the 30. Well, this uh, ground game all season long, with the exception of LaMarcus Coker, who's out with a knee sprain, has not been, look at this. Yep. Fewest yards per game since 1964. And this Tennessee team is on pace for the rest of this season, if they continue this pace, to throw the ball more than run it. Attempts for a Tennessee team. It's only happened twice before. Guess who the quarterback was? Oh, uh, man. I, I think I know where his dad is today. <laughs> First down and 10. Crompton play fake. Gets a good block. Darts to his right. Now pressure coming. LaRon Landry. Oh, boy, did he close quickly. Once Crompton got loose to the right, Landry made a beeline toward him. Now watch this. You said that Crompton scrambled to his right. But what happens is all of the receivers are on the left side of the field. There's no one to throw to. Once he goes down, look at that. Middle of the field, there's no one over here. Nobody to throw the football to. That's either a sack or a scramble because everybody for Tennessee was on the other side of the field. Leads to a second down and 15. Foster is in the backfield again. Crompton, screen pass, tries it, in trouble. Now he improvises, and he'll have to run again. It's going to be third and 16 or 17. Ricky Jean Francois made the stop, number 90. I just, uh, this is, might be defensive holding. It was a screen pass, could have been holding on anybody. Wide receivers could be holding downfield on the play, too. Les Miles' team penalized six times in the first quarter. Holding, number 10 on the defense. Penalty will be 10 yards from the previous spot. Second down. See, right, right now, LSU's going, we don't got a 10. Nope. Nice call, but we don't got a 10. That's what they're saying right now. That would be a non-existent number. <laughs> Nevertheless. Yeah, and, and LSU fans are a little touchy about calls right now. We don't got a 10. <laughs> no, no, he used better English. He said, we don't have a 10. Yeah. He's a Michigan grad. We're looking for a Bo Derrick and can't find one. <laughs> and Crompton. I'll tell you, Bo Pelini is not giving an easy throw to Jonathan Crompton. He knows he's a rookie. He knows Cutcliffe as we look at Bo Pelini. He knows he wants to give him easy throws. He's not giving him any. David Cutcliffe will be forced to throw the ball downfield. Second down and five after the penalty. And they'll keep it on the ground. Arian Foster, coming back from San Diego, California. And Ricky Jean Francois makes his second tackle. Born in Haiti. Third down and six. Three-man rush by 
Louisiana State. Crompton will tuck it and run. He's got the first down, and he does not die. How about that? He ran right into Chivas Jackson, and he gave as good as he got. Yeah, he, he did, but I don't like it. I got to tell you, when you get him near the sideline, you got to tell him we've got an injured backup quarterback. You're the only guy we got. Now, Jonathan, you can't try out for the team today. You got to help the team. That's okay. But then slide after you get the first down. Because I tell you, LSU, the crowd's cheering for you right now. But LSU will play that game with you all day if you want to. He does get the first down. Chivas Jackson won't forget it. First down and 10. Out of the spread. And it's a four man rush by the Tigers. Crompton. Pass. Is it caught? No, it's not. Incomplete. Intended for Lucas Taylor. And it's time for the AFLAC trivia question of the day. Who are the only two teams to play in the BCS championship game without winning their conference title? Only two. I know you know the answer. I know. For sure I do. Boy, I just hope it's not uh, the Big Ten loser as the third one, in my opinion. Here's Crompton going right. Lucas Taylor makes the catch. It'll be third down. Well, a, a lot of the conversation in the last week or so has centered around Ohio State Michigan meeting, of course, in two weeks. And is there a chance that the loser of that game would get into the BCS Bowl game? There's a perverse part of my personality that would love to see the controversy of that oh, one. Oh, not me. Oh. I don't want to see Well, that. I don't either. I just. They've got their chance to get in there, win the game when you're in there. They don't have to depend on any vote. I'd like, I hate to see a second place team back into it. Here's third down. Crompton. Again, improvises, throws it short. Intended for Josh Briscoe, number 81, it'll be fourth down. The no, play, excuse me, the play sure. before, Vern, on that short pass, when LSU came up and made that tackle, that is the game plan for LSU. Tackle the Tennessee receivers after the catch. They do not want yards after catch. And this LSU defense is one of the best tackling groups I've seen in a long time. Colquitt on for the fourth time. See that average, 55 yards. He's uh, averaging 46.4 for the season. Latest member of the kicking Colquitts. Father, brother, cousin that preceded him here at Tennessee. Fair catch. Called for and taken by Davis at the 16-yard line. That's a 35-yard punt, but very effective. And CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC will continue after this word from your local station. Now we've seen Jonathan Crompton, the backup quarterback. Backup quarterbacks have had significant roles in this series. And for more, let's go down to Tracy Wilson for this SEC moment presented by Sonic. Trace? That's right, Vern. Back in the 2001 SEC Championship, LSU starting quarterback Rohan Davey was injured on this scramble in the first quarter. And backup Matt Moff took advantage of the opportunity. He scored with the Tigers up 7-0. Tennessee rallied as Casey Clawson threw two touchdown passes to lead 17-10 at the half. In the fourth quarter, trailing 17-16, Matt Malk ran it in again from 13 yards out to give the Tigers a lead. They would never relinquish as they won their first SEC title since 88. Back to you, Vern. All right, Tracy, thank you. And uh, earlier that same season, LSU last visited here and lost in regular season. Jamarcus Russell, Charles Scott is in a tailback. Russell with a play fake. Flips it out right side. The defender slipped. And Dwayne Bowe makes the catch in front of uh, Antoine Stewart. Now, Jamarcus Russell, we mentioned he's got gaudy numbers at home. Hasn't played that well on the road. Well, and it, it hasn't just been him, but some of those numbers have been reflected in his stats. Uh, you know, they play tougher teams on the road. Thought the strategy by LSU against Auburn, they didn't really throw the ball till late in the game. And Florida's defense is tough. But you can see when he has time to throw the ball, he can put stats up like that. Well, three of those four interceptions came at Florida. And here is uh, Keelan Williams. That's a first down out near the 30-yard line. 
Well, how about this uh, LSU offense? You, you know, you search for a tailback to help them. They do not have, although they've used six different tailbacks so far, LSU has this year, they don't have one tailback for the season that has rushed for more than 300 yards. 277 is the most, and that is by freshman Charles Scott, and currently he's listed four or five on right. the depth chart. He uh, was just in for one play. Yeah, well, we, we need more graphic room for all the guys. That we <laughs> <laughs> Hester, Broussard, Scott, Vincent, and Keelan Williams, and now the sixth one, Trendon Holiday, the 5-5, is in. They give it off. To the right side, it's Jacob Hester, and he comes almost unopposed over right tackle. A 15-yard gain. Nice package by Jimbo Fisher right here. Tennessee is thinking they're going to get the sweep out to the outside. Good cross block. Nice pickup inside by Brian Johnson, number 75 on the stunt. And there goes Hester, a 4-5 guy. Doesn't look 4-5. 4-5 fullback gets it into the secondary. I think it's mandatory, absolutely mandatory with a backup quarterback Tennessee has in the game that Tennessee's defense draws the line right here. No more touchdowns in the first half. Russell being chased, and he gets it uh, to Keelan Williams. Out to the 48-yard uh, line will make it. Thursday on Survivor, the game is about to take an unexpected turn when tribe members are given the chance to change teams. Oh, my. Don't miss a new Survivor Thursday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Well, it's Survivor Island now here in November in the SEC. Because you lose now and you're out. This is an elimination game in the SEC. Yep. Both teams still in the chase. The loser of this one all but eliminated. In any uh, case, trying to get to Atlanta for the SEC championship game. Russell finds Craig Davis, who was popped by Gerard Mayo. Third down and four. Blitz, Russell, hit as he lets it go. It's an incomplete pass and a very, very definitive call by the referee, Penn Wagers. That was a nice piece of officiating. Yeah. Boy, he was emphatic. Remember when I said you can't sit back in zones against Jamarcus? Russell, number 90, I think that's him right there, number 90, Turk McBride comes over the top and makes the play here. Watch him jump up. Yes, he's the one that gets there. Full speed. He started off at defensive end this year, but when Justin Harrell was injured, they moved McBride inside. He's a bit undersized, but very quick at defensive tackle. That forces the punt, and Chris Jackson is on to send it deep to Jonathan Hefney. Three-man rush. Jackson no problem getting it away. Fair catch called. It'll bounce. Oh, ho, 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 ho. yeah, get your hands up and get away from the football. It didn't touch him, but we've seen that happen a couple yeah. of times. Anything close, you almost would have wanted Morley to jump on the ball just in case. And they're claiming that yeah. it was touched by Morley. Now, if it was touched, it would go to the two-yard line back where it was touched there. Demetrius Morley, who got uh, taken to the cleaners on the one touchdown pass. The play is the blocker. On the field is a touchback. Play on oh. the field is a touchback. They're say, wondering now, did it hit Morley's wrist? That's the thing. Right hand to wrist. It looked like it looked like and, there might have been contact. And that is a reviewable play. Touching of any type of a kick by a player is reviewable. Did it touch him? Now remember, it's called the touchback, so you have to find something definitive to change the call. Did it hit the back of his hand or wrist? Well, only Morley knows for sure right now. And he's not telling. That's right. I don't think he's going to be a voluntary witness. The previous play is on the further review. This occurred before the coach requested the challenge. Les Miles wanted to make sure it was being reviewed. It is being reviewed. Did it touch Morley, the back of his right hand, it looked like, as he spun around. Here's another look. Hefner calls for the fair catch. Morley turns. It, did it look like the, uh, the, the, the ball changed its rotation? That's the key. Did it look like he's going end over end? 
and then it looks like it pops up. I think it grazed his wrist. I do too, but yes. I'm wondering, Gary. What do they can change it, right? Visual, did right. In, you know, the old, enough. what's Is become a cliche, the uh, indisputable visual right. evidence. And remember, the official down there said it didn't, so the guy upstairs says, I've got a better view than you. LSU is saying, you know, we haven't got a few of these calls all year. Got a holding penalty on a touchdown that wasn't there. We got a pass interference. Are we going to get one? Now there's Morley. That one doesn't show enough to me. This is the one you think is definitive? No, I don't think it's oh, definitive. Okay. I'm okay. just guessing, to tell you the truth. I, You know what I'm going to bet? I'm going to bet it's a tough call. <laughs> oh. I, I, I really think it grazed his wrist. I do, but I don't know if it's enough to change. What do you say? Well, I'm, I have a question for you. Do those pickets on the fence you're sitting yeah, on, do they hard. hurt? They're tough. I'm trying to straddle it right now. If I, you know, I don't have, if I was in the booth. I'm going to guess. I don't think there was enough to overturn it. Overturn. After further review, the play stands. It's called as a field. Touchback. Not enough. I mean, it was debatable, right? Debatable. And I do understand Les Miles' sure. anger. Because I stood here, watched it on my monitor, and I said, I think it grazed him. Could I give it 100%? I don't know. Yep. We had about, we, we got about six people in our booth here. Yep. It was five touch, one no touch, wasn't it? About five, five to six. One guy said no. Everybody, almost everybody in our booth, booth thought it was a touch. First down and ten. And a flag thrown on the near side. Prior to the snap, sideline warning on the LSU sideline. Their first warning. That's the line judge, Terry Walters, who's uh, having the conversation with, with Les Miles. Again, I, I really do understand the so anger. What? But I just, I don't think there was enough to overturn the original call. Well, he's furious. Yeah, Les was more there, wasn't he? Lip readers, just close your eyes. First down and ten. Draw play. Arian Foster doesn't get much. Luke Sanders in the middle. Strung him out. Okay, time now for the answer to the... Cue the duck. Trivia question. Who are the only two teams to play in the BCS championship game without winning their conference title? And the answer. Well, the first one was the Nebraska team. They got beat by, what, 80 points in that game? Or was it 100 points? <laughs> by Colorado and Oklahoma, which was swamped by Kansas State. They both made it to the championship. Yeah, I, I do I do agree with you that, the for, for example, the loser of the Ohio State-Michigan game, eh -eh. No, I don't think so. I'm just saying the perverse part unless of my everybody, personality. Unless everybody else loses two games. Yeah, yeah. And, and today, Michigan hangs on to defeat Ball State 24-16. Right. They're both deserving to play for the national championship. And you know, by the way, they both have an opportunity with nobody can vote them out of it now. They both play for the national championship. All they got to do is beat each other. Second down, Derry Beckwith, the linebacker, limped off. Holly Highsmith, number seven. One of the leaders defensively at second down. Crompton, play action, pulls back, goes right side, nice pass. Robert Meacham, number three, who had a couple of drops early on. He's having an outstanding season, is Meacham, the junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. See, that's the first time that Tennessee is allowed, and David Cutcliffe is allowed, Dick Jonathan Crompton to throw the ball downfield, man-to-man -man coverage. Zenon on Meacham. That's what you get from LSU. They're going to challenge you to throw the ball downfield. If you do it and you do it well, you have some opportunities to throw the ball. They're not giving you cheapies. No easy throws for five yards. 15-yard gain. That's the first catch for Meacham today. Screen pass. And uh, Crompton had to throw it at the feet of Corey Anderson. Anderson, we were told, would not play a lot today. 
And he was in on that one, and uh, that screen pass yep. looked pretty ugly. Yeah, Tyson Jackson, number 93, the defensive end, read it just right away. Again, I say, as much as right now, at this point in the game, Bo Pelini says, I'm not going to let you have those. I'm going to force you to throw the ball downfield. I like my chances of my pass rush getting to you, and until you show me you're willing to throw the ball downfield, I'm taking all that junk away from you. Out of the spread now on uh, second down. Arian Foster, the running back, wide to the left. Here's Crompton, looks the other way, and he finds his tight end, Chris Brown, number 28. That will leave a need of about four for the first down as they get to the 41-yard line. They like a nice matchup in SEC. Aaron Sears, number 76, right there on the outside against Dorsey. He's got a little help inside because it's only a three-man rush and a five-step drop, but you don't get around Aaron Sears very easily. How about this? 251 passes attempted by Tennessee, only six sacks. That's about 2% of the time they let up a sack. We look at the third and five now with 5.05 to go in the half. Sprint out. Catch is made. First down obtained at the 48-yard line as Robert Meacham makes the grab. That's 47 catches. There's a flag down back, and it's going to be against LSU, roughing the passer. This was a pick pass by Tennessee. They expect man-to-man -man coverage, so watch the little rub play. Right here, a little come out of your hook and then rub right off to the outside. That's what cleans it up. Inside come in, hook up, and then bump inside. Right there. Beautiful little design play by Tennessee. It was on Ryan Willis, number 52. Not much doubt about that. Yep, that one will get called. Look at Crompton get up and say, you know what, I may be a freshman, but did you see me? Did you see that open they had on CBS? I'm a big, tough guy. That isn't going to hurt me. <laughs> Eight penalties on the Tigers. Tennessee, none. It's 7-0, however, a 23-yard pass from Jamarcus Russell to Craig Davis, the only scorer in the game. Eric Ainge started, played the first quarter, went out after his sack, and that one is not a very good pass. Second and 10. Ryan Willis in a down position. Crompton rolls right. Hit as he lets it go, it's incomplete. At the 30-yard line, that was Josh Briscoe again, number 81. See, that's, a, that's another opportunity for a Tennessee wide receiver to help out their football team, and they cough this up. Crompton's going to get it. Kind of a dash to the right, throws it on the run, puts it right on his wide receiver, and Zenon does a nice job of collisioning the receiver. Come back to the ball, come back to the football. He does, now catch his football. That is a catchable ball, and one you expect your receivers to help out a young quarterback on. Now here's strength against strength, third down conversions against third down defense. LSU outstanding defensively, 26% allowed for the year. Play fake, Crompton deep. He's got a man open. It's caught. It's a touchdown by Robert Mitchell. <laughs> little bump chest with Trooper Taylor, the wide receiver coach. A little congratulations from Eric Ainge. A not-so-little touchdown pass from Crompton to Meacham. And Tennessee's within one of tying it up. James Wilhoit. Will kick it. 7-7. It was a perfectly thrown ball, but it was not an easy catch. We've been on the receivers for not coming up big. Double coverage, bracket coverage, a safety and a corner on the play. Runs right by Jesse Daniels. The ball was perfectly thrown, but right on the thick fingertips. You got a young quarterback make a play? Well, Tennessee's wide receivers made a play to tie this football. Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. We play late second quarter. Just another small gathering on an autumn afternoon. 106,333. And Jonathan Crompton just threw his first touchdown pass. 37 yards. It's the first touchdown given up by LSU since 
Tim Tebow threw one for Florida ten quarters ago. Will Hoyt's kick. A dandy. Touchback. All right, let's go back and look at that touchdown. Third and ten, remember. All right, now stay with me here. Two things. Number one, this offensive line does a great job on third and long against the best sack defense, and it's bracket coverage right here. One, two guys are going to be on Meachin on this play. There he is. You watch this. Good protection inside. Meachin gets bracket coverage. Ball's thrown downfield. They're not going to give you the short ball, and Meachin goes out and puts it right on the fingertips. That is an 11-man play for Tennessee. 11 guys working as one is the only way you score against a good defense. And recall that the drive began after the play, the call on the field was confirmed that led to a touchback. That was on Demetrius Morton. And uh, let's check in with Tracy Moore on Robert Meacham. Thanks, guys. Robert Meacham has the name Trey Jones written under his eyes. Meacham visited with the 10-year-old on Thursday at the Children's Hospital. Jones, who has Crohn's disease, is a huge Tennessee fan and is watching the game today. And Meacham told him that his first touchdown would be for him. I bet he's smiling right now, guys. Uh, that's great, Trace. You remember a couple of weeks ago, we spent a half an hour with Robert Meacham. Very, very quiet young man. But what, what a... A wonderful visit that sure was with him. How about he said his first touchdown? Yeah. <laughs> That's Broussard getting nailed with 325 to go. Robert Ayers and Ryan Carl are there to lead the defense. He is a real unsung hero of this defense, Ryan Carl. He was a special teams player a year ago. He's moved into that Sam linebacker spot. All he does is make plays. All he does, I mean, just all over the football field, whether he's dropping, just makes plays. Ryan Carl drew up a Tennessee fan. He's from Franklin, Tennessee, about 20 miles south of Nashville, among whose residents are now listed Scott and Tracy Hamilton and their son, Aiden. Yeah, moved to Nashville. The Olympic champion has become a country music fan. <laughs> Another timeout by this LSU team. And that, that's it. That's it. Well, they used him wisely in the first half. <laughs> Can't take him with you. 2.48 to go. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Third down and eight. Here's Jamarcus Russell pressured. Shakes it. Still running loose. And tackled at the 44. Well, no one expects Jamarcus Russell to be a scrambler. He does not like to run the football. But the pass rush gets past him. And then when Russell gets into the secondary, it's a man-to-man -man look back there, and all the defensive backs have their back to Russell, and he goes for what looked like a timeout opportunity for Tennessee to get the ball back to a scoring opportunity for LSU with two and a half minutes to go. They got plenty of time. Despite his size, not known as a runner. No, not and at all. 34 yards on that one. 2.14 to go. They fake the reverse. He's hit, but he stays on his feet and throws it at the foot of a Tennessee defender. Xavier Mitchell got there first. It was Hefney who couldn't get up to the ball. I'll tell you, Xavier Mitchell is stunned right now because he comes around, watch this, and he's going to put a layout shot on Jamarcus Russell. He hits him, he, and then he gets up, he looks at him and goes, how could you have thrown that ball? I put my best hit on you, and he just stared at him and goes, that's impossible. I, I'm telling you, I was watching him. He just looked at Jamarcus and said, that's impossible. <laughs> well, he's, I keep thinking about that. He said, I'm kind of hard to bring down. Yeah, kind of. Second down and 10. Russell, play action, coming right. Fires it short. Caught by Richard Dixon, the tight end, who uh, does get out of bounds and stops the clock. Ryan Carl with the tackle. And a reminder, we're less than two minutes away. Game time from the Geico Halftime Report. Archie Manning has joined Spencer and Tim. We'll go back to 
New York for all the scores and highlights here on the first weekend in November. Yeah, now this is a nice situation if you're LSU. I mean, you get a chance here if you run the ball and pick up the first down, or if it is a first down, the clock is going to st stop while you get set up. Looks like a player is down on the LSU sideline. It looks like a Tennessee player. Xavier isn't it? Mitchell. It's yeah. Xavier Mitchell who's had an outstanding game. He may be tired from hitting the quarterback. It takes a toll on you when you hit a guy 270, I think. Yeah, on his back. And meanwhile, they stretched the chain. And he came up just short. There's Mitchell on Dixon. Yeah, look, I wonder if it was Ryan Carl that put his own hit in his rib cage right there. Now Mitchell's up and trotting off. He's apparently fine young man from Long Beach, Mississippi. One of those, as are all of these LSU players, one of those whose uh, family was so affected by Katrina a year ago. Xavier Mitchell's family lost their home. Remember the story? They they closed. They sold it and closed just a right. week before the tornado hit. Third and inches. Dixon is the motion man. Russell, right side. First down, LSU. Ali Broussard. Uh, remember uh, week two here after the big win against California? Air Force came in here and played so well. This is the try for two in the win. And Xavier Mitchell with one of the big plays of the season for uh, Tennessee. The biggest defensive play of the season for Tennessee, no doubt about that. 141 to go. Now Mitchell appears to be okay. Russell back. Forced right. Intercepted. Picked off at the 10-yard line. This is Jonathan Hefney and his fourth interception of the year. Huge, huge play. Only the fifth pick all season thrown by Jamarcus Russell. So this was a matchup that was not going Jamarcus's way. He had a tight end going against really Hefney, who's a slash corner safety, and Hefney was just going to eat up that tight end. Richard Dixon kind of fades away from the throw. There's Dixon, he's going to come out, and there's Hefney. Now watch, Hefney is going to bait the throw all the way. He says, I've got this tight end all the way. When the tight end kind of runs away from the ball, Hefney cuts inside and makes the pick. Tennessee has all three timeouts remaining, 102 to go in the half. It comes left, nice play. Ooh, Allie Highsmith, number seven, the linebacker. And another look at the interception. Jonathan Hefney has been so big in this football team with punt returns, tackles. He's the third leading tackler, and he cuts inside. Really nice matchup for a kind of a corner safety type player. And Jamarcus Russell made a big mental mistake on the play. That's not a good throw to a kind of below average receiving tight end that LSU has there. Second down and 10, 57 seconds to go before halftime. LSU rushes four. Crompton, wide open, Jason Swain. First down at the 48. They will stop the clock while they reset the chain. And again, the Volunteers have their timeouts remaining. They have passing one-on-one. -on -one. Cross one guy short, bring the trailing guy behind it. If somebody doesn't cover the middle of the field, LSU latches on the crossing route, and Jonathan Crompton reads it perfectly and throws it better. Jason Swain makes the catch, a 14-yard gain. Tennessee uses the first of its three timeouts. Crompton, 6 of 12. Eric Ainge had, he tried six passes, one completion, three drops among the six. Yeah, and, and Eric Ainge has to stay ready. He has to keep his ankle loose. You never know what will happen. Guy gets hurt, Eric Ainge will have to go back in the game. First down and 10. Crompton rolling right, gets a good block. The pass is caught by Swain. He turns and dives, and did he get the first down? I think he, oh, no, they're going to stop it. 
but he did stop the clock. Got out of bounds, 41 seconds to go. I tell you, you got help deep. This is a great route. This time Zena knows he has a safety behind him, so he's running a trail, but out to the outside. It's a good route to the outside by Jason Swain, and another strike. This quarterback is showing why teams like, you know, Clemson, Michigan, LSU, and Tennessee all wanted him to come play quarterback for him. Second down and short. Will Hoyt, the kicker. Oh, well, here we go. Right side, Arian Foster. What a gaping hole on the left side of the offensive line. And a 21-yard game. They actually caught LSU in a corner blitz. They had the perfect call on this time. From the outside, the corner's going to come, and they gash it to the inside right there. You couldn't have a better play call at that time. Aaron Sears, the big tackle, just walled it off, and the perfect call at the perfect time. A successful run, finally, for Tennessee. Yes, finally is right. Well, I was going to mention Will Hoyt's career long is 51. They're well inside that now. It would be a 35-yarder if they don't gain a yard. Here's Crompton back, goes in the corner, and puts it up for grabs. It's knocked away incomplete intended for Arian Foster. Not really the matchup you want. A running back against a skilled corner. Crompton really didn't read it out well. Should have gone to the other side of the field. You've got a running back who's not used to running fades against the corner who is. Crompton threw it well, but not to the right guy. This time, Robert Meacham, who has the touchdown catch for Tennessee, goes to the top of the screen, wide right. Second and 10, 26 seconds to go. And they'll keep it on the ground. Arian Foster to the 15-yard line. Now then, use a timeout. Oh, yeah. We'll take a timeout right now. There they go. You know, I, I really got to give it to this Tennessee offensive line. We saw them get manhandled a bit by Florida when we were here early in the year, but the addition of Josh McNeil at center has made them a little bit tougher up the middle. Josh McNeil is from Collins, Mississippi. He uh, made his commitment to Tennessee while he was on a recruiting trip to Southern California. Mm. He called Philip Fulmer when he was out looking at uh, USC and... <laughs> Wasn't Said, a fit, huh? it's, it's a little too big for me, <laughs> Coach. I'm coming to Knoxville. Time out. Beautiful view of Neyland Stadium on the banks of the Tennessee River. And a big decision here for Philip Fulmer. Yeah, this is one of those decisions. you got a young quarterback. He's playing hot. He's having a good football game. If it was me, I would run the ball, center it up, call a timeout, and try to leave this game 10-7 at half with the lead. And he will go from the uh, spread formation. LSU, four down. They bring only four. He will throw it. Runs left. Tucks it. Looks for blocks. Out of bounds at the eight-yard line. Eight seconds to go. And Crompton runs into the bushes. Yeah, see, you put the sack in the football game when you throw the ball right there. You got to bring that field goal team on the board right now. This was a half that Tennessee at one point had negative yards at the end of the quarter. They've gotten back in the football game, and they can take the lead with your backup quarterback. If I'm Philip Fulmer, I'm loving this opportunity to kick the field goal here. See, Will Hoyt, who is the fourth all-time scorer in Tennessee history with 293 points. He's having a fine season. 11 of 13, and they will measure with eight seconds to go. So it'll be fourth down when they attempt a field goal. There were some big plays in this football game. None bigger than the Morley punt when it almost grazed his wrist or didn't graze his wrist because that allowed Tennessee to get back in this football game. 14-0 might have been too much. Now the initial call on that punt was that he had not touched it. It was a touchback. And... Uh, Gary, I think you and I agree that it, we think it was touched, but not enough to overturn right. the clock. Well, it was, it was marginal, let's put it that way. It wasn't obvious touch. It was not obvious. And Tennessee used that opportunity to go 80 yards. The touchdown catch made by Meacham. Now here is Will Hoyt. Eric Ainge can do not but look on now with that high ankle sprain. 
Will Hoyt to break the tie. Tennessee uses the huge interception by Jonathan Hefney. Only the fifth thrown by Jamarcus Russell this year. And it leads to a field goal. And we'll go back to Tim Brando in our New York studios. Well, math was never my strong point. We're going to let Tim stand by for a little bit. We've got 10-7. As James Will Hoyt kicks the field goal to break the tie and gives the Volunteers the halftime lead. And Tracy Wolfson is with Philip Fulmer. Coach, talk about the performance of Crompton. Is it his game to finish? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, Eric's a little dinged up, and John's had a heck of a week and or really a heck of a year of preparation right now. He gives us a little running ability, and he's competing his rear off. So, yeah, he's, it's his game. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck. Back to you guys. It doesn't have quite the same ring as Moon over Miami, but Moon over Knoxville is not a bad sight at all, is it? At halftime a moments ago, moments ago, 29-year-old Knoxville resident Corey Hayes. This is for $100,000. 35 yard field goal. And Corey, Corey Hayes took a victory lap. And why not? A hundred thousand bucks. Halftime, 10-7. Tennessee has a three-point lead on the strength of a 24-yard field goal inside the left upright by James Wilhoyt. Wilhoyt will kick off. LSU won the toss at the beginning of the game and uh, deferred their option to the second half. Early Doucette and Jared Mitchell are the deep man. This will be Doucette at the four. Goes right, avoids the first tackle, can't avoid the second, and he's down at the 16-yard line as Jared Parrish makes the stop a moment ago. Tracy Wilson with LSU coach Les Miles. Coach, 0-2 against top 10 teams on the road. What do you need to do to I'm change that? I'm not worried about 0-2 against top 10 teams on the road. I'm worried about finishing this game and finishing it well. Our football team's damn good. We figure to show that the second half. How are you going to do that? Play all right. Thanks a lot, Coach. Sometimes you wish coaches would show a little emotion. Well, he sure did there, didn't he? The challenge is LSU on the road has only scored three points so far this year in the second half. On first down. Here's the draw play. Right side. Keelan Williams, and he just picks up a couple, so it'll be second down. Gary Danielson, what does LSU need to do? I think they just got to be able to just keep throwing the football to the middle of the field. When Jamarcus Russell throws to the middle of the field to his wideouts, not his tight ends, not his running back, to his wideouts, he's very effective. The difference in this football game, obviously, Crompton's come in, but the Tennessee offensive line has done a great job against a very, very physical defensive line for LSU. Second down and nine, a gain of one in the last play. Russell, overthrown, intercepted, and there's a chance for the touchdown now for Demetrius Morley. And he got it. but I think it just slipped out of his hand. The toughest battle Morley had was after he got in the end zone, he was knocked goofy by a teammate. Morley with the touchdown. In the loss at Florida, Russell threw three interceptions. He's thrown two in this game. You talked about goofy. The pass was goofy. That's all I could say. The ball just slipped out of his hand. It wasn't within 15 yards of his intended receiver. And Morley just got a gift. 
It was like a kickoff, end over end, and he had to beat a 270-pound quarterback who just threw an Eric Ames-type pass like last year. Ouch! Just like that, Tennessee's up 10. If you're a coach now, you got to look into Jamarcus Russell's eyes and make sure he can be the quarterback you expect him to be. 100,000 people on the road, a disastrous play. Is he tough enough to come back mentally from a just an awful throw? First time Jamarcus Russell has played in this stadium. Here's the kick, taken by Jared Mitchell, number 87. And he's going to be tackled just across the 20-yard line. And another, this looked like a shot put, Gary. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, maybe been throwing those rockets and missiles. This was a shot put or a catapult, whatever you want to call it, because it was a slant pass that no one could have jumped high enough for. <laughs> and... and if you're a quarterback, you just go, please give me another opportunity to play coach when I come over to the sidelines because if you're not a pure number one quarterback, you can get benched after throws like that. That's one of the hardest hits of the ball game. Jonathan Hefney delivered to Demetrius Morley. Here's Russell. Trendon Holiday is in the lineup. He gets the handoff and comes left. And he's hit behind the line. Does get back near the line of scrimmage. Well, LSU, 6-0 at home, 0-2 on the road. They've had gaudy stats at home, averaging 46 points there, but on the road only 6.5 points. And look at the figures for Jamarcus yeah, Russell. Yeah, coming into this game, he's added two more interceptions in this football game, the last one a disaster. you got your coach that just probably breathed fire in that locker room, and you come out and lay an egg on the first play. Inside to Bo. Bo. Little uns inter underneath route. He's got a lot of room. And Antoine Stewart finally catches up with him and knocks him out of bounds at the 40-yard line. This is very reminiscent of the plays that LSU was using against Florida. It's a wide receiver screen. Get the football in the hands of your playmakers. Les Miles told us the playmakers on this football team are Bo, Doucette, and Davis. How do you get the football to him when you got a quarterback that just threw one of those? You give him an easy screen pass, gain his confidence back. That's a gain of 36 and a first down at the 40-yard line. High formation now. Ali Broussard is the deep back. He goes right one-on-one -on -one out of the corner. And the stop is made by Jonathan Hefney, number 33. Now let's take a look at the halftime statistics in this ball game. Well, these things look so bad at one point. Look at Tennessee with 134 yards. They don't have a check, but it almost could be a check because at one time they had minus five at the end of the quarter. So they survived. When you can gain that many yards in a quarter, you don't have the big check, but you have a yellow check from me because they survived. Second down, seven. Hester is the running back. Tennessee playing four down. They bring five. Pass to Doucette out on the left side. Cuts back toward the middle of the field. And is inside to the 29-yard line. Jamarcus Russell for the day. You know, all quarterbacks get knocked down. Early in the game, Jamarcus got knocked down, got a little woozy, came back with a great touchdown pass to Davis. But then he had the pick going in at the end of the half and starts out the second half with another one. Now, all of us quarterbacks have had games like this where you just don't do it well for a while. Your teammates and your coaches want to know how you get up off the ground and survive. And so a test for Russell and LSU. First down and 10 at the 29. Well played. And that's Justin Vincent, number 25. Second down and 10. The story of Justin Vincent is an amazing one, isn't it? SEC most valuable player in 2003. I had him in the Sugar Bowl against Oklahoma, and he was the most valuable player of that football game. 1,000 yards rusher. 
You're supposed to get better. He got hurt. Understand he got hurt. Right. He still is not coming back. Second down and 10. He is still the deep back in the eye formation. Russell fakes it to him, goes right side for Bow and overthrows Bow. Morley was defending. I mentioned Jamarcus Russell playing here for the first time. He told us yesterday he visited here as a junior in high school in Mobile, Alabama. He was here for the Miami-Tennessee right. game in 2002. Miami yep. came in here number one in the country and won decisively. Yeah. By the way, that was a play that was there for the making. Jamarcus threw a bad play to bust the defense by Tennessee. Nobody covered Bo. He just didn't make a wide open throw. Missed opportunity. Four wides in the game now. Justin Vinson is the running back. It's third and ten. Here's Russell. Steps up. Darts right. He'll run it. Cuts back. Nifty play. And he's got a first and goal inside the seven. Well, two of the longest runs of the season for Jamarcus Russell. Had one of 34 earlier. See, I really like this kind of stuff. This is how I judge football players. You know, when you come back with an embarrassing football play when I'll bet 75% of the LSU fans are going, put in Matt Flynn, you keep your wits about you and drive that football right down the field and win over your football team, your teammates, and more importantly, the coaching staff. First and goal, down by 10. And Jacob Hester struggles to get to the five. Had to fight hard for a couple of yards. Sure did. Tennessee sold out inside on that with the eye formation. They were going to force that play to bounce out, and Hester was not looking for a bounce out. Second goal. Davis and Bo back on the field. Hester's very good at catching the football. He's got eight touchdowns for this football team. He's very dangerous out of the backfield. Play fake, lob it, Davis deep in the end zone, double covered, and the pass incomplete, third and goal. What do you like here? I, a second down actually was wishing they would have gone for the regular formation and then kind of put that throwback out in the flat. When he went wide out with shotgun, they had nothing to do but throw the football. Now, in this situation, you're going to put your Marcus Russell back in shotgun again and try to fuck, call your favorite play right now if I was LSU, whatever that is. Four wides, Russell back. Inside cut, go for the touchdown for LSU. And with that touchdown, he becomes the all-time leader in LSU history. Touchdowns scored by a receiver. And at 31, it's his 32nd. And I would say that that is LSU's favorite play, wouldn't you say? Yes. The wide receiver screen, that's exactly what Jimbo Fisher said. He goes, let me circle my favorite play. That's what he called in the work down on the goal line. Had shared that record with Michael Clayton. Gets the touchdown and brings LSU right back. And here is uh, Colt David. If this is successful, and it is, barely, this ties him for second all time consecutive PATs made for LSU. Didn't have my eyes on him, but usually what happens is he goes out and comes back in on one of these wide receiver screens. Let's see if that's what they ran. Yeah, that's exactly what they did. The wide receiver screen, that times it up and allows your offensive lineman to get out there. And an easy throw from Jamarcus from the bottom to the top in two drives. You know, we've given a lot of props to David Cutcliffe this year. Right there is Jimbo Fisher, the talented offensive coordinator for LSU. This conference, I always talk about the defensive coordinators, some good offensive coordinators, Auburn, Al Borges, you know, Spurrier's running South Carolina, Urban Meyer's running at Florida Tech, and Dan Mullen. There are some talented offensive coaches also. Oh, boy. They called it a touchback, by the way. Ja'Cory Williams. He was lucky he didn't st step out on the half-yard line, but Williams gets called as a touchback, which is a 20-yard gain. Now, let's see, did it hit the pylon? Here's Williams. Ah. 
gets it. Ball yes. keeps going. Ball goes into the end zone and hits that. See that wobble right there? Yeah. That's all that was a Nice call right there by that linesman standing right there straddling the pylon. That's it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Jonathan Crompton on in relief of Eric Ainge. Ainge went the first quarter, 3-3 three, three and outs. One of six with the high ankle sprain. Crompton has thrown for a touchdown. This one is incomplete to Meacham. Meacham caught the one touchdown. That was from 37 yards out. You know, I, I really like, I got to say that this LSU defense by Bo Pelini, they don't back up. I mean, they had a big pass hit against them. It was a touchdown. You give the, the young quarterback, you tip their hat, threw it into double coverage, perfect throw, perfect catch. They still won't give him the easy throw. They're going to make him throw the ball downfield. That's why that offensive line for Tennessee must pass block. Second and 10 after the incomplete pass. McNeil snaps it back as Arian Foster skips to the outside across the 25, near the 27. It'll be third down and three. Red Lobster Scholar athlete today is Tennessee's Brad Cottom, a 3.02 grade point average. Major in Business Studies and a 2005 Academic All-SEC. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown tonight by donating $1,000 to Tennessee's General Scholarship Fund. He's one of two Cotton brothers who play for this team. His brother, brother Jeff is also a part of it. Yeah, and both 6'8". <laughs> they get noticed on the practice field. Now, if there's been a weakness for this Tennessee offense all year, they've been throwing the ball, they've been putting up points, Short yardage running attack. Now they're going against the best rush defense man, probably in the SEC. What will Tennessee do? You're on your 27-yard line. you got a backup freshman quarterback in there. Well, some kind of a conversation involving the referee, Ken Wagers. Now the clock has started again, 840 to go. Good job by Ken Wagers. I think he said, let's keep it clean, guys. We've got a good football game going here. Let's not get chippy. Third and three. Arian Foster is the running back. Rolled out by Crompton. He does give them the running threat that Eric Ainge does not provide, but he stopped here. There's a fumble, and it is recovered by Tennessee. It will be fourth down. And so, fourth down will bring on Colquitt. Remember the pick play for the first down? That was the call again, but this time, the defense. Here's going to be the picker right here, but this time, inside does the LSU defensive back go. He cuts inside. Watch it. Right inside the pick right there. No throw. There it is. Right there. He comes right inside the pick. Takes away the first down throw and forces Jonathan Crompton to go. Chavis Jackson, Chavis Jackson, excuse me, number 21, did a great job of getting and reading that play. And Colquitt will kick it deep to Craig Davis, who's been the punt returner for this LSU team for only the last two games. And he is nailed as he comes up to make the catch. That's Ja'Curry Williams, who bobbled the kickoff less than two minutes ago, and now nails Craig Davis. He got shoved a bit, but I don't think he's going to get away with this one. I think they're going to call this one. No, no, he got shoved a bit from behind. And, and Davis so uh, yeah. looks like he's favoring yeah, he's that knee. And that's the danger when you have your money guys, your big play receivers. 78% of the pass offense for LSU has come from their three wideouts. Fair catch by kick Davis. Catch on the kicking team. I don't think there was Middle any field, shove there. That's one that you have to foul. keep control of your body. And Williams ran right into Davis. Hope he's okay. Well, at for the LSU. least, it looks like a hyperextended knee. Yes. At the at the at the minimal. You know, at least he got his cleats out of the ground. You know, it's almost like he jumped over the guy. That's the first penalty of the game called against Tennessee. We'll be right back. Well, Tennessee, remember that Florida game, Vern? They were up 17-7, to ended up losing that game 21-20. The Tennessee faithful are looking at this scoreboard saying it looks a little familiar to me. And it feels yeah. that way. Keelan Williams going right, bangs over the tackle, and appears to have picked up a first down. That was Jonathan Hefney down low. 
See, it, it appears to me that Williams is their best back. Now, you take him out for a few blows, you know, but I'm going to ride the guy. I mean, he's tried four or five different backs. they got to lather up a back. I know he's only a freshman. That's why you can take him out occasionally. But he seems to me to be your, your best back in this football game. Lather up a back. Oh, yeah, you got to lather him. Oh, okay. Get him going. First down and ten after the Keelan Williams run. This time, nothing doing. Turk McBride, number 90. You know, part of the fun of doing this for a living is the chance to spend time on campuses and with some of these young men. We chatted with Turk McBride. What a what an he impressive really young kid he is. And what did he say? We, I asked him, he kept talking, talking. I said, what's your favorite course? And he said, what, religious studies? Yeah. Exactly. He said, I love to go in there and just hear that professor just talk about it. He said, I can't wait to get to class. Great kid. He's going to kill me for this. Turk McBride, that's a nickname. Uh -oh. His real name is Claude. His real name is Hester. And that is an LSU first down at the 24-yard line. Jacob Hester and a gain of 17. Pretty interesting. When you start to produce yards, you get the ball. And Hester has earned these yards. Williams, really talented. Vincent, an SEC MVP. Broussard highly recruited, Charles Scott highly recruited, Hester just keeps plugging away, keeps plugging away and gets the ball. First down and 10 after that 17-yard pick. They do spot it one yard back at the 25. Here's Keelan Williams. That one was uh, messed up at the point of exchange. Second down and 8. 17-14 Tennessee. Russell with a play fake. Screen pass. Perfect. This is Justin Vincent diving to the 15-yard line, very close for the first down. Only the third catch of the season for Vincent. You know, just that last play call again, I just, you really have to look at these offensive coordinator with, a, with just a lot of admiration. Right there, Jimbo Fisher kind of smelled the blitz, and he had the perfect call into a corner blitz. A little safe screen pass. I mean, that just doesn't happen by accident. These coaches put a lot of time in. That time the blitz is coming. Tennessee's coming at him. The chief, John Chavis, says, you're not moving it on me. I'm going to blitz you. The perfect play against that defense, and it gets a first down for LSU. Allie Broussard is going to be the running back now. Broussard missed all of last season, has had some weight problems this year. Les Miles said, we keep hoping he's going to demand that he be the go-to guy. He gets the ball here, and he gets a couple of yards. He does. It was a first down. So he gets uh, down to the 11-yard line. I thought that play had more. Looked like I did, he, too. Yeah, it looked like he tripped over his own offensive lineman or a defensive lineman who was, uh, was engaged with his offensive lineman. You expect your back. When there's pretty good blocking up front, if they're even up front, you expect you to pop through there for gain five or six yards. See the numbers, 2003 and four. And uh, he's one of the five running backs who've been featured this year. Now it's Vincent, who had that great freshman season. Barely has 100 yards this year. Bo is in motion on second down. Russell flips it out. Third receiver is Hester. Nice job of avoiding the initial contact. And then Hefney and Mayo come over to make the tackle. Talk about the resilient LSU team. They get that wounded duck pass from yep. Russell that was returned by Morley for a touchdown in the first minute. And now they've come back with a touchdown drive, and they're looking good on this one. Yeah, it, there's no backing up in the SEC. 100,000 people, and you're playing a great defense in Tennessee. You can't hide out there. You throw a bad pass, offense, good leadership by Les Miles to keep his football team in this game. And on third down, the running back is Keelan Williams, the freshman from Lafayette, Louisiana. Toss. Williams heading to the corner. Has a chance to score and does. Third and short. Fake it inside and pitch. And I'll tell you, that was a beautiful drive. Used their running backs. They used all of them. They used their receivers. They used the pullback in the flat. Played the screen pass. 
This is a team that just threw an interception for a touchdown. The next two drives, they score. Colt David for the extra point. He's now hit 70 in succession. He's the number two all-time on that list for LSU. And let's look at the Keelan Williams touchdown. Yeah, right in here. They're going to fake inside and then pitch it outside to Williams. Watch the right side, way right after he gets the ball. Let her go here. Sprint to the outside. Early set is going to pop out. Look at him right there. Keeping it clean for his running back. Wide receiver downfield, giving it to his football team. You'll love it. Well, at halftime, Les Miles told Tracy Wilson, Wilson we're going to play our behinds off. And don't forget, later in the game, the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. How about this second half so far for LSU? They come into this game with only three points total in the second half in two games. They got two touchdowns in three drives. Keelan Williams, the freshman, got the touchdown from seven yards away. And Tennessee trailing now by four. Ja'Cory Williams, center of the field does not get back to the 20-yard line. Jacob Cotrera, who leads this team in special teams tackle, is part of it. Number 54. And now, Jonathan Crompton, who came on in place of the injured Eric Ainge. Ainge, if you weren't with us at the beginning, suffering from a high ankle sprain, gave it a go, but uh, limited, had three drops, in the first six passes, then he was sacked, and that was the end of the night for Eric Ainge. Crompton has come on in his first significant playing time as a redshirt freshman for the Volunteers. Arian Foster. Alexander with the tackle. Well, let's uh, revisit the day for Eric Ainge. Yeah. In that first I thought he looked okay. You know, maybe 75%, but no one helped him early. And then that LSU defense kind of started locking him in the pocket. The last one, when they grabbed the ankle, you knew it was just about done. And so he can only sit and watch. Second down and nine. 21-17. Goes left, pulls up, and drills him. Catch is made by Robert Meacham, number three. Do this one nicely on the run. Every yard is takes a good throw against LSU, and this was one. Got him out of the pocket. Good scheme to keep that LSU pass defense, eventually that pass rush off of him. And now we come to that third and short again. And really, the tough part of the Tennessee offense, Philip Fulmer told us the one part he's disappointed in is third and short running. Will they even run the ball here? No. Caught him. And it's out of the backfield. Caught by Brad Cottom. As the brothers caught him with double tight ends on that one. And the freshman finds the 6'8 junior from Germantown, Tennessee, a gain of 24. Yeah, it comes right by. Real simple play. There he is right there. He's just going to slide out into the flat. Should be one-on-one -on -one coverage. You got a man up on him. Rands right by Ali Highsmith, I think. It yes, number seven, Highsmith. Very simple play that everybody runs on third and short. And Compton, again, puts it right where it has to be. There's a fine line. I'm going to run this play, and I want to talk about the fine line in this Tennessee offense, okay? First down and 10. Josh McNeil snaps it back, blitz from the corner. Crompton gets around the blitzing linebacker, Luke Sanders, and lobs it out to his tight end, Chris Brown. There's a fine line. The difference from being a pass-first team and being a pass-only team. And that's what Tennessee has to be careful of. They've only got 450 yards rushing. Can a freshman quarterback with a pass-only option really move the ball against a good defense? Well, they are limited in their running, running attack with the absence of LaMarcus Coker, who is their leading rusher. He went out with a knee sprain. They do expect him back next week for the Arkansas game on the road. Second down. LSU loads it up. Marion Foster dances to the left. Nice move by Foster. See, that's exactly what Tennessee needs to have. 
David Cutcliffe told us, I'd love to get 100 yards running. But if we don't, we can still win, but we can't give up on the running game. This time, isolation play, and what Foster does better than any Tennessee back, in my opinion, is feel that blocking and then run to daylight. He doesn't have breakaway speed, but he's a very smart runner. He got by LaRon Landry on that play, and Jesse Daniels, a little gimpy, he's down. Jack Marucci, the trainer for LSU, now taking care of him. 21-17, time has been called, and we'll uh, step aside. Of course, we near the end of the third quarter of play. Jesse Daniels walked off without assistance, and Craig Stiltz has taken his spot. Two good safeties for this LSU team, Landry and Daniels. And Stiltz isn't much farther behind. Yeah, you're right. First down and 10, a 21-17 game. Jonathan Crompton. Reverse, right side, Meacham. Boy, well defensed by LSU. They were not fooled for a moment. Yeah. Uh, it's so reminiscent of watching the, the NFL films where you, when you go to an NFL game, you watch it, you go, oh, look at all that space. Oh, where did all that space go? <laughs> it's exactly what you're watching, these two teams, both Tennessee and LSU. Well, for the most part, this whole conference, space just goes away really quickly. Second down and nine officially. Could be the final play of the third quarter. Crompton with a play fake. Looks right. Double coverage. Throws it in the end zone from each him. Lucky that one wasn't tipped off, picked off. Jonathan Zenon headed short. LaRon Landry headed deep. Yeah, Landry's as good as there is at reading the quarterback's eyes and getting in and making the play. Zenon's short and Landry comes over. He had a chance to intercept that ball, but uh, you know, Mitchum did a good job. Meacham did a good job of tipping that ball away from Landry. Stayed with it. The receiver didn't give up on it and saved the quarterback on that one. Robert Meacham, good job. Number third and long before, this was the touchdown call by Jonathan Crompton. That was out of a third and ten. It went for 37 yards to Robert Meacham. This one, a third and nine. Zone blitz, Crompton fires it into double coverage again. It's incomplete at the 15-yard line. Well, that's exactly where the ball should have been thrown. LSU went with a real wide Tampa 2 defense, but there was no linebacker. I don't know if it was a bust or not. Both safeties were extremely wide. Double coverage bracket, and you can feel those safeties. And Swain says, hey, come on, come on. And look who's in the middle of it, the All-American Landry. Now well, we've reached the end of three in Knoxville. We'll return to Neyland Stadium right after this word from your local station. Exception return for a touchdown, but resiliency, 16 of 25 for the game now, and uh, a career high of 46 yards rushing. He's watching as Tennessee goes for the field goal. 46-yard effort from James Wilhoyt. His two misses this year have been from 42 and 46. Casey Woods to hold. The kick is way wide right. So Will Hoyt is now 12 of 15 for the season. And LSU holds and they get it back with a lead of 21-17. Yeah, this, this was, wasn't close. I don't know if it was a, a poor hold or he hit the turf. I mean, usually when those don't curve in like that, but uh, wasn't even close. And uh, he knew it right away, and Phil Filmer says, now we still need a touchdown. Yep. Well, you put it in the hands of the number four scorer all time right. at Tennessee, and it goes over on downs. Here's Russell. And a ball out to the 35-yard line. 21-17 here, second down and five. And Jamarcus Russell under center. Hand it off to the fullback that's out near the 40-yard line. And so LSU, here's the, here's the story. If Tennessee loses tonight, 
to this LSU team. Florida's in to the yeah. SEC championship game. Because they win the tiebreaker, even yes. if Florida loses another football game. Now, Philip Fulmer's looking around and saying, uh, how do we get this football back? LSU started to run the football. You don't want to let your foot up on the gas, though, if you're LSU. Third and one. Broussard is the deep back. Everybody up. Broussard close. And I I don't think he got this. He had it looks like get almost to the line. And I don't know if he did. Had to get three straight runs. Remember this now. Three straight runs right up the middle of the Tennessee defense. Tennessee's up there with nine guys. Short yardage play. And Broussard does not make the 40-yard line. He is short, clearly. That was a little tentative, if you ask me. All three of those play calls. And so Chris Jackson is on to punt. Jonathan Hefney he is back. He has not been a factor in this game thus far, but the punt return defense by both of these teams a little shaky throughout the season. And they fake. Here's Jackson going left. Jackson with a first down plus. And he's down at the 44-yard line. Oh, what timing. Talked 18 yards. We talked about it. Coaching decision. A coach could steal a win. I think Wes Miles had his mind made up that he was going to run this fake no matter what. That's why he ran it on third, on third down. And if he didn't make it, he was going to go for it. This is just a sweep. Everybody goes this way, and here comes the first down play. He knew he had it in the back. He said, GD, you're up in the box second-guessing me. I knew I had this fake punt in the bag. A coaching decision right there is huge. First down and 10. 18 yards on the fourth and one. Draw play. This is Keelan Williams, the freshman. Well, Chris Jackson is quite an athlete. He's the starting third baseman on the LSU baseball team. For Skip Burtman, hit 305 last year with a home run and 17 RBI. So... Not, uh, as, as some quarterbacks I know would say, just a kicker. Yeah, he, he's not one of those uh, deer in the headlights athletes. He's been in the big time, used to handling the ball, and used to making plays. Second down and ten. That's four running plays in a row, though. And your advice? I, I think we'll see one of those little screen passes to the outside. Second and ten. Again, Tennessee loads up. Russell sidearms it right side at the 40-yard line. The catch made by Early Doucette. Nice job of running. He might have got another first down. Might have gotten. See, uh, Early Doucette was a high school quarterback. He's still learning how to play wide receiver. When he gets, that's the smash route. They call it smash. You come in, come out, and now make people miss. And Early Doucette is real comfortable with the ball after he makes a catch. He had his own nightmare play, didn't he, Vern? Remember the kickoff against Florida when he dropped it for the safety? Absolutely. Everybody has those plays. Well, that was a game of misfires for this LSU team. Five turnovers in the game, three interceptions from Russell, two fumbles. Yeah, I, I think the LSU mindset coming into this game is, and, and all due respect to their, to their opponents, is we gave the game away to Auburn. Didn't throw it enough. And we gave a game away to Florida. We dropped it too much. Mm -hmm. Here's Jamarcus Russell, who has had a big game running with the football. And he puts his helmet down and gets another first down. That's an 11-yard gain for the guy who doesn't run it that much. This was a design play. You fake the wide screen over here. Watch him look. But watch the blockers going the other way. Very creative play. They've been throwing this, now he's got the other way. Just follow it behind your blockers and go. Nicely designed play by LSU. I've never seen that play before. That's a new creation. Five runs for 57 yards. Key in this one was that fake punt on fourth and one. Bump and run up top, it's man to man. 
plugged the middle defensively, and the handoff goes right side to Keelan Williams. Demetrius Morley. Well, you talk all afternoon about coaching decisions. Yeah, if you're in a tight football game like this, there's going to be four or five decisions in the game where you can help determine the outcome. Les Miles had his mind. He had this in his pocket all along, and he pulled it out at exactly the right time. Second down and 13 after that last play. John Chavis, defensive coordinator for Tennessee right now, is starting to move his defensive backs up. Last time it was man-to-man -man all over the field in a safety blitz. This time, what do they do? Tennessee backs off a bit. Here comes the blitz. Russell with a play fake, fires it, tipped, intercepted. Picked off for the third time in this ball game. Antoine Stewart. Number 24, his third interception of the season. And so for the second time in a road game this year, Jamarcus Russell has thrown three interceptions. Yeah, Jamarcus threw this ball to the right guy, and I think he threw it accurately. There's Dwayne Bow right there. He's going to come out and hook. Did it go right off his hands, or was it tipped? Ball's right there. There's the opening. The ball's thrown. The defensive end gets back and tips the ball. A drop defensive end gets back and gets underneath that. I think it was Wes Brown made the tip. Actually, Antonio Reynolds. Was Antonio Reynolds. And he got it. Ico scoring recap. Well, much earlier this afternoon, the touchdown pass to Buster Davis gave LSU a 7-0 lead. And then Jonathan Crompton tied it up, this beautiful pass and catch by Robert Meacham. 7-7. And right before the half, Will Hoyt's 24-yard field goal cuts just inside the left upright. 10-7 Tennessee. On the first play of the second half, a wobbly, quacking duck thrown to Demetrius Morley. And he scores. LSU responded immediately. Dwayne Bow with the touchdown from Russell. And then the go-ahead score, the toss to the freshman, Keelan Williams, comes left. Scores from seven yards out, 21-17. And that's where we reside for the current moment. And Jamarcus Russell just threw his third interception of the ball. Uh, I'll call him when he makes a bad throw. That was great defense. And give that one to the defensive coordinator. He got him on that one. You just tip your hat and you move on as a quarterback. That was a great defensive scheme. Off the turnover, it's first down. Crompton hands it off to Foster, who's going to be strung out as he goes to his left. Tyson Jackson was one of those who was there defensively. Jonathan Zenon as well. Nine fourteen to go. Can Tennessee pull out another fourth quarter uh -huh. win? Well, Eric Ainge has led them to three. Ainge on the bench. That dreaded high ankle sprain. Arian Foster split wide to the right, top of the screen. Jonathan Crompton will go from the spread. LSU with three down. They bring three and drop eight. And a tough, tight pass right side. Great play by Ali Highsmith on that one. Man-to-man -man coverage. Cuts underneath the throw. Highsmith played his... Play his responsibility. Don't get beat inside and run underneath it on the outside. He grabbed his arm. He grabbed Chris Brown's arm and deflected that ball. That was perfect defense on that play. Now, if you're LSU's defense, you're calling yourself the best defense in the country. You don't get beat when you're up 21-17 with a backup quarterback in the game. You finish the game with your defense and you win it. And that makes this a significant play. Third and 12 with Crompton out of the spread. From the backside, he shakes the tackle, improvises, tips, intercepted. Picked off by Derry Beckwith, the linebacker, who goes left looking for blocking help. Didn't get it, but it's the first turnover for Tennessee this afternoon. We just said it. If you call yourself the best defense in the country, you make a play and win a football game. You don't put it all on your quarterback and offense each week. Jonathan Crompton got big pressure, spun away from it, but then just tried to fit it in too tightly. Pittman comes around, big strong guy, he showed it in the open, spins off it, then he tries to stick it in there, and Leron Landry gets a piece of it. 
Look, Gary, like it was tipped by Meacham it again. It was either Meacham or Beckwith and Landry were right there, and there it is. Beckwith gets the gift. Wow. Brompton's first interception of the game. LSU has it back. In between the Tigers and the Volunteers. Jamarcus Russell chased by Ryan Carl. Flips it out to his tight end, Richard Dixon. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. Oh. That's gang pursuit, isn't Boy, it? Boy, this is a physical, tough football. This game means a lot to a lot of players out on that field, and you can just see it. It's popping off the TV here. Came out, they've been running the ball, now they got a little play action. Stewart, bang. Morley, bang. Hefney, bang. The guy's still going. Boy, is this fun to watch. Second and seven. Eight ten to go. LSU has won in this stadium exactly once. 11, 1, and 1. That victory in 1988. Inside to Bow. Fumble. Recovered by Tennessee. It's Ryan Carl. And it was Jonathan Wade who made the play. The wide receiver screen to Bo. Bo has been out there all day watching this wide receiver screen, and then the super fast Jonathan Wade comes from behind and makes it. I've seen this play. I'm going to make a play. Watch him come from behind and strip Bo, and Carl is the guy on the spot. Jonathan Wade is a native of Shreveport, Louisiana. He played high school ball there with Evangel. When Tennessee won last year, he earned the ire of the Tigers by planting a Tennessee flag in the eye of the Tiger at midfield. Crompton, deep. Got a man. It's caught. Robert Meacham for the touchdown. Remember when Meacham said the first touchdowns for the kid? There's his second one. Robert Meacham from Tulsa, Oklahoma makes hay after the defensive play from Jonathan Wade of Shreveport, Louisiana. Will Hoyt's extra point is good. Just a two-man route. There he is right there. Only two people go out. This is a bomb the whole way. Laurent Landry right there. The All-American has got it. But the other All-American gets it. Second time these two have hooked up. The red, fir red shirt freshman and the junior from Tulsa. And Crompton celebrates as the Volunteers regain the lead. Now there has been some enthusiasm on display here at Neyland Stadium. Robert Meacham's second touchdown catch. This one beautifully taken between two defenders. In for the score. And Tennessee reclaims the lead. Vern, it started the first week of October. Remember, second half comeback against Georgia. Fourth quarter comeback against Alabama. Fourth quarter comeback against South Carolina. And now November comes, will it be another fourth quarter comeback? 7.29 to go. Looking ahead, both teams have their full complement of three timeouts. Will Hoyt has been very effective at kicking off today, and he is again. More than 50% of his kicks this season have resulted in touchbacks. Another look, Gary, at the and touchdown. The design of David Cutcliffe. First of all, he goes eight-man protection back here. Only two people out. He's going for the home run in this one. Taking all the thinking away from the quarterback. Jonathan, just throw it long. Robert Mitchum, Mitchum, go get it. LaRon Landry, the All-American, misses it. And look at him stick the ball out there. David Cutcliffe dials up a winner. 
First and ten at the 20. Russell, Williams, Tennessee tackle. Antonio Reynolds, number 89. By the way, the same Antonio Reynolds who tipped that pass for the interception. That time he was dropping. This time he ain't dropping. He's coming upfield. He plays off the block from Hester and makes a wonderful play. Second and 11. You get the full effect of 100,000 people into this football game right now if you're LSU. Blitz from the corner, Russell, nice slant pattern inside, Doucette leveled, turned to Cartwheel when he was hit by Hefney, yeah, but it's a gain of 12. And that is the same play that Jamarcus Russell, the ball slipped out of his hand for an interception for a touchdown, it gets called, you're on the same backed up, you know that goes through your mind, you say as a quarterback, this is the play, I goofed up, this time he didn't goof it up, Jamarcus Russell still with a chance for his signature win, I believe, at LSU, and he can pull this off. Under six to go, first and ten. Russell's figures now, 20 of 30 for 219. Two touchdowns, three interceptions. Deep left side, defender slipped, and help gets over right on time. The corner slipped, and Hefty got there to make sure the catch was not secure. Yeah, there's a mental mistake by uh, Jamarcus Russell. It looked nice, it looked pretty, but you got a free safety in the middle of the field. You know he's going to go there. Watch how open this receiver early you said is. Throw it on the line. you got a gun. you gun it in there. Too much space, too much air, and allowed the safety to get over there. Mental mistake from your quarterback. That ball should have been rifled in. Second and ten. Oh, that's a costly timeout for LSU. Substitution problem. Yes, costly timeout. Second down, ten. Tennessee brings four. Jamarcus Russell runs again and looks for the first down, fights, and might have gotten it. The spot is going to be very close to the first down yardage. There's a little... Yeah, ball came out. And but... Philip Fulmer is pleading the case. Right. They're going to say the whistle blew. Once they say the whistle blew, it's over. Antonio Reynolds limping a little bit. The runner was ruled down on the play. We'll now have a measurement. A lot of effort here from Jamarcus Russell. Tennessee can smell it. One or two more stops, and they've got a football game. Russell takes it up. He's been the leading rusher for this team. Fights through. The ball comes out. The ball came out, but he was ruled down. It's over. Yep. Down, it's over. There's no continuation. Mm. And a first down. Look at it again. We can't hear the whistle, but that's obviously what happened. All right. Spun. Got a hit. And Turk McBride rips the ball and ends up with the ball. He ripped that ball out, didn't he? A lot of football left to play. And a first down 10. 24 21, 5 16 to go. Reverse. Trendon Holiday, the 5 foot 5 inch speedster. Oh my! Woo. 
Hefty saved a touchdown. You know, Hefty misjudged his speed. He thought he had him all the way. It's like he was missing a subway train. You know, he thought he had it. I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll get there. And he was almost a half a minute late. Missed his train. Watch Hefty. I got him. I got him. Wow, he almost ran right by me. <laughs> Does he have some speed? Well, we mentioned that he won the state title three times in the 100 meter. Holiday won the state title four times in the 200 meter. Uh, 4 2 7 40 is what I got on my book here. That's pretty fast. And he ran away from Jonathan Wade, a member of the Tennessee yes. track team. That one bobbled by Doucette. Let's revisit Gary's guy. Well, let's see how close I came. I said LSU needed to find a runner. The only one that's really come through for him is Jamarcus Russell. He also said you can't lose it. Four turnovers have kept Tennessee in this football game. Could Tennessee help the young quarterback? Meacham did it. Two great catches, catches, and obviously this has been a physical football game. There's been no backup in this game. Tennessee brought it. LSU brought it. If you want to play in the big leagues, you better be able to play physical football as both teams have. Keelan Williams, the freshman, is the deep back behind Jacob Hester, who's now lined up at fullback. Second down from the 40. Williams, it'll be third down. And the ball spotted at the 37-yard line. 3.40 to go. 20 to go. Third and three. A three-point game. And with the clock the way it is and the timeout situation, you wonder if Les Miles is going to make this four-down territory already. Tennessee, four men down. They'll blitz. They bring five. Here's the reverse again. Coming right. This time they didn't go for it. Fourth down. How about that? Double reverse on third and four. Woo! You got to reach into the playbook. Going to hand it off here, then going to hand it off up here. Double reverse on third and four. Tennessee was too tired to chase the first guy. Came right back to him. And a volunteer player is on the ground. Look at Hefney. <laughs> Gerard Mayo. Now the trainer, Jason McVeigh is out tending to Gerard Mayo. Mayo, the sophomore from Hampton, Virginia. Yeah, this, this uh, Mayo injury has actually been a break for LSU. They might have had to call a timeout to decide what to do now in this minute or two minutes here while Mayo's on the ground. LSU can map out a strategy. Look at their timeout situation. You saw the hit right there. Mayo took a big one. From Wes Brown. From his 94. own guy. Yes, he did. That happens a lot. Friendly fire. And that will set up fourth down and three. Well, we kicked off at uh, shortly after 3.30, about 3.37 this afternoon, and we have been on a teeter-totter yep. since then. Tennessee fell behind 7-0. Back and forth we've gone, and Tennessee most recently reclaimed the lead with a beautiful throw from the redshirt freshman Jonathan Crompton to Robert Meacham. Second time they have connected today. And now the injured players, Gerard Mayo, still down. I, I got to admit, this is not a no-brainer decision. This is, a, this is one you get paid a lot of money to make if you're Les Miles. You've got a Tennessee team that doesn't run the ball very well with a young quarterback. But you wasted that timeout. Remember that timeout that I said was really going to come back. Now I think with fourth and two, you're almost forced into going for it. Let's see what Les Miles does. Jacob Hester is in. Well, Colt David is the field goal kicker. His longest is 45, so I don't think it's an option no, either. No, Punt or go for it. Out of the shotgun. Delay. Oh, no. oh, we got movement. Yep. Oh, wow. It's the same the shift. shift. Ball start. 79. And that is a huge yards. mistake. Down the main fourth. The same shift that started the game when Tennessee shifts into their bare a look. Herman Johnson, number 79, right there. He's the guy that did it. Watch the shift. There's the shift. There's the flinch. Started out in the first quarter. It's still here in the fourth quarter. 
That's the first penalty this half, but it's the ninth in the game. Now you got to recalculate, don't you? Clock is running, no choice. He's going for it. Doucette, wide left. Ball wide right. How about that? Timeout. That's their second. They have one remaining. Well, they're rolling the dice here on fourth down. I don't think that's such a bad timeout right there. You might as well have the play you want on. So the clock stops with two minutes and 15 seconds to go. LSU uses its second. Two minutes, 15 seconds to go. It's 24-21, Tennessee. LSU will go for it on fourth down. They are two of two today. That includes that 18-yard run out of a punt formation. Well, I, I think clearly LSU's favorite play is that wide receiver screen. That won't be here now, I don't think. Remember, that's the play that Bo fumbled on. I think you're going to have to throw the ball downfield, and you better protect because LSU, the last couple, excuse me, Tennessee, the last couple times have been bringing it. LSU has to get inside the 35. Russell, a lot of time. Across the middle. Caught by Doucette. I believe he's got the first. Fourth and eight, and they get nine. Tennessee brought it. They brought a five-man five blitz. They came in the offensive line from LSU, stood them up. Look at all the time. That allowed an easy throw, and Doucette squared up, went right off Morley, got a square across the middle, and made the play. Wonderful protection on fourth down. From the 34 with 1.53 to go. Quick flip, right side, Doucette. Dwayne Bow with a great block, and he's set to the 23-yard line. That's a gain of 11. Yeah, now remember, when you're in college football, you can block downfield if the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Watch Bo right here. He's going to start blocking before that ball is caught, but it's caught behind the line of scrimmage. He's allowed to do that. Great play. It's like a sweep to do set. Clock stops and college ball on the reset of the chains. Now it's running again with 93 seconds to go. Hester is the running back. Tennessee, four-man rush. Hester drives to the 15-yard line. Morley with the tackle. Plenty of time. I'm just thinking if you're Tennessee and you've got three timeouts, do you want to try and conserve some time here? Bad idea. Well, no, I don't think it's a bad idea. Nothing's a bad idea anymore in college football. Oh. Uh, you know, it's a thought. Right now, I would think that it'd be better off with a touchdown to keep LSU having to go too fast. Keelan Williams, a freshman, back in the off. That's bow in motion. Second and short. They'll hand it to Keelan Williams. He's inside the 10 and down at the 6. How about that? I said that Keelan Williams would be their horse. He has been the horse at money time, the freshman. And that offensive line that wasn't prepared to run the ball early in the year has now shown it. Pass blocking on fourth down and rooting out a first down here down inside the 20-yard line. After the change of reset, the clock restarted. 34 seconds to go. First and goal. These two teams went to overtime in Baton Rouge a year ago. Tennessee won that. Here's Russell. Nobody open. He's under pressure, and he throws it away. And so the clock stops with 20 seconds to go. It's not just Tennessee and LSU. If Tennessee loses, Florida's in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. If Tennessee wins, how about Arkansas playing South Carolina tonight? Yes. About, and here we are with 20 seconds left. How about second and eight with 20 seconds to go? <laughs> LSU can stop it once more. Bo and Doucette go wide to the left. Craig Davis in motion. They fake the reverse. Russell pulls up. He'll run and dive, and he's out of bounds. Stepped out at the four. Absolutely. 
That's where it didn't help being six foot six. That big foot stick stuck out there and he got the line out of bounds. That was an interesting play. Craig Davis goes in late motion. They fake the sweep. He actually blocks the defensive end. Now let's see if it, Jamarcus Russell steps out. Right there, yep. Toe on the line at about the four and a half yard line. Yep. Third and goal. Three point game. Bowen Doucette left. Davis right. Tennessee appears to bring four. They do. Russell back. Into the end zone. It's caught. Only do set touchdown. Set it. Could it be Jamarcus Russell's signature win? He drove him down, throwing three interceptions in this football game. He still let his team down the field. I think he might have been throwing the ball to a different player at the back of the end zone line. And Doucette actually intercepted it. He'll never admit it. If I was him, I'd never admit it. Trouble on the hole, but a nice job of getting the ball down by Matt Flynn. That's why you sometimes have a quarterback there, Colt David, with the extra point, and it is a four point game. What a fantastic. There's Doucette right there in the slot. He goes in and hooks. See if he isn't throwing to Bo at the back of the end line. Bo's wide open. I think he was. I agree. I think he was throwing to Bo and Jamarcus says, you know, maybe I deserve one. What a football game. Nine seconds remaining. Into all that orange with 100,000 fans on the road after you've had four turnovers, three interceptions. What a drive. Eric Ames can do naught but watch. Now time for the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. Guess, guess which one we'll pick. Yeah. Here's Demarcus Russell. I think you're right, Gary. I think he had Dwayne Bow in the back of the end zone. Yep. And Doucette reached in and grabbed Well, it. don't admit it. I'm going to give you great advice, Jamarcus. Do not admit it. Just say absolutely. I threw it a little wide. It was a touchdown. Remember, this had a fourth and eight to it this drive. An 80-yard drive with the game on the line. Three wide receivers, each of whom has caught passes in excess of a thousand. They all played a part today, as did... Obviously, Jamarcus Russell. Absolutely. Remember, the clock starts with the kick. And there. How smart play. Go down with it right away. Yep. Back up fullback, David Holbert. Well, Les Miles told Tracy Wolfson at halftime, we're going to come out here and we're going to play our Aflax out. You bet. <laughs> and they have. Tennessee uses a timeout. Well, it, there's no more pride. There, it, nothing feels better than coming from behind and winning on the road. There's nothing better than that in sports. You know, and it strikes me that when they lost that 21-point lead last year yes. at home to this Tennessee team, not to say that the LSU partisans are rabid in their devotion, but Les Miles Came was up. hammered right. after they lost yeah. that game. That's, that's big-time football nowadays. You know, you give up 21 points. That's just the way it is. And I think even Les understands it. But you know what? He's got his signature win now also. This is their 13th trip to Neyland Stadium. They won here in 1988. And, of course, down in Gainesville, the Gators can make plans for Atlanta if this score holds, unless the Hail Mary works. Well, Nick Saban right now is remembering one play. When he is remember the one play, so he's saying, guys, it ain't over. Miracle in Lexington. Yep. So he's saying, let's just finish off this game. Remember what happened to us against Kentucky a few years ago? That's the deep safety look right there on the 10-yard line. <laughs> Final play of the game. Crompton back across the middle, incomplete. Well, not quite the final play of the game. Took a little longer than I thought it would. 
And the Ruby Tuesday player of the game. Jamarcus Russell, 24 of 36, total of 247 yards, three touchdowns to counteract the three interceptions. And most significantly, Gary, he rushed for seven Absolutely. yards. Absolutely. And he's not a rushing quarterback. But I'll tell you what, all you kids out there that are in sports, anybody can lead when it's going good. Leaders, when it's going bad, pop up. Jamarcus Russell led his team to victory. Here's the final play. Think about this as Crompton goes back. He'll run it, pull up, being chased, and drops it. That will be recovered by Tennessee. On the first offensive play of this half, Jamarcus Russell threw a duck. Yep. And it was intercepted by Demetrius Morley, returned for a touchdown, came back and led them to a victory.